welcome. Welcome back, everybody. How was your evening? Good, I hope. They're um, apparently losing their fucking minds down in Florida. Losing their minds. Ron Bennington here, uh, of course. Back Thank you, Ronnie. One. You uh, you spent some time down there in the Sunshine State, oh, is God, it? Oh God, yes. The oranges, the yeah, yeah. Beaches, the manatees, the dolphins. <laughs> yeah, and they uh, when they get a little snow. Yeah, it's a rare event, but they lose their minds. Yeah, it's very very difficult. Uh, well, there's no insulation in Florida, so it's much Apparently. colder, you know, and it's it stays humid even in cold weather. Yeah, a humid, freezing cold day. And, and the, the old people that retire down there, it gets yeah. to their bones. Oh, it hurts. They get that arthritis, and they're like, oh, I could feel it in my bones. You know, they they can't even take a good rain. Uh, no one, If it rains in Florida, no one can drive. They all act like they're on a water slide. Right. You just go, what? <laughs> what? They just can't circumnavigate I, I, I know I knew the snow was in Savannah where exactly is it uh, now uh, I'm not sure I think they, they're calling this uh -huh. a cyclone bomb I know it's a cyclone bomb see the uh, I guess nor'easter yeah uh, the traditional things blizzard storm whatever it is. not scary enough for 2018 yeah not scary enough so they had to come up with something called a a cyclone bomb. Mm -hmm. It sounds dangerous, Ron. I put on the Weather Channel, and uh, I'm like, is the sound not on? The weatherman was just crying. He was just <laughs> sitting there. He had his head down. He was crying. Just crying? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit. This is going to be a bad snow. This could be a this bad snow. This is not going to be a good snow at all. They uh, they predict some uh, weather for us up here. Uh huh. I guess uh, 8 to 10 is what they're saying for Long Island. I heard 80 10. 80 10. In Long Island. That is a lot of snow. So you might be staying home tomorrow. You're not going to uh, deal with that. I still got the studio in the house. Yeah. And I got, uh, I, I take the Long Island Railroad. They're good, right? Trains are good. No, trains, trains these days, no. We had more train crashes this year than, I think you got to go back to Jesse James. <laughs> shit they on know, the, when on they the used to actually yeah. put stuff on the track to rob the train. Right. Uh, yeah, okay. Hey, well, Trump, uh, Trump helped us out with the airline industry. I saw that yesterday. He, he, uh, Donald Trump took some credit yeah. for the fact that there has not been an aviation disaster here in the United States, and uh, a big one, a major one, uh, a passenger airliner, in quite some time. And he Donald he, Trump patted himself on the back for that. He said he decided when he came in to really be strict on that, and he did it. And he did it. And... <laughs> Are you torn today? Because I know, I know, in here yesterday, we took, a, I mean, we were after every minority. We had uh, O&N, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, boy, I haven't seen that in a while. He's really in deep with some of these <laughs> fucking people. But I mean, we were in, we were actually, we went to an anti-gay place, which hasn't happened in this city in many, many it decades. I love the gays. Yeah. You know how it is. Uh, yeah. You should have spoke up. No, no, I don't speak. up. I let my guest go, get their opinions out. Yeah. What are you gonna? What am I gonna sit here and fucking? Uh, hey, you! I yeah. love that he was using the word sodomite. It needed sodomite. To be and he went back, and they said it's a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope with the sodomites. Yeah. I had not heard sodomite in centuries. The last time I was hanging around, it was me. Moses, uh, Moses, <laughs> Jesus, there's a picture. Me and Jesus, we're at a big table with a bunch of other guys. And someone said, uh, hey, pass the wine, you sodomite. Yeah. I laughed my ass off. It was funny. I once got accused of being a sodomite when I was standing too close on line. I'm like, I'm just... We're all stuck here. Hey, wait, what are you? Are you right next to me here, <laughs> homo? Did, it, did the word homo come out? That's a playful word. It is. I uh, no. I have no problem with the gays. I love the gay people. Mm. Um, uh, they they uh, they're just stunning. Trans in particular, right? People. Trans. Trans people. Yeah. For me, I don't. Uh, I don't care. I don't care what you do with yourself. Yeah, you do what you do. Why don't? Why? Why would I give a shit? Who am I? 
Here's, Who here's, am I to say what people should or shouldn't be doing? Here's our fight today because we're an alt-right show here, right? I'm filling <laughs> in. I know I'm filling in, but we're alt-right. Am I correct? Are we alt-right here? Am I wrong when I say that? I don't know. I don't know. We, we're we, an alt-right show. We all have our opinions that do come into the show at right. some point. But, but I mean, we want guns and we want to keep the minorities away from us. <laughs> we want to keep our children pure. It's the AA <laughs> compound media show. Oh, uh, um, I mean, if that's what you've, uh, come, yeah. how, the conclusion you've drawn. We're pro cop, anti FBI. We're just right. Media. But now we got Bannon yes. against Trump, Trump against Bannon. It's coming apart on us. It is like watching these superhero movies. Uh, Are you more Trump than Bannon? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm more Trump than Bannon. I'm going to shock you here. What, what, what? I'm way Bannon. You are Team Bannon. Always have been. I think he's a very intelligent guy. And unlike a lot of these other people, he has an actual philosophy. You might not agree with it, but he is, in his mind, a patriot. Wow. Doing the right things. You don't think Trump is trying to uh, help the country? No, no, no. Trump is just another fucking carny <laughs> from fucking Gibsonton, Florida. You know what I mean? Like, I would not, and that's not a, you know, uh, the world needs carnies. I grew up a carny. That's but true. I saw this guy coming a mile away. But Bannon means the things that he says. Yeah. And he's also, like yourself, he's old school Sirius XM. Old school. He is old school yeah. Sirius XM. Uh, but. I don't know. I I like people say, uh, "Oh boy, did you see what your guy, your guy Trump did? Did you see what your boy Trump did today?" And I don't even have to hear it before I go. Yeah, it's great. Whatever it is, yeah. it's great. But now that he's against Bannon, and Bannon is against his kids, it's your your box that you're standing on keeps getting smaller, a little smaller. Who is us? Who is out? Who are Trump? We? Uh, Trump keeps he holds on to. Uh, friends and and uh co-workers yeah. uh worse than greg opie hughes um yes i think <laughs> i will say this i don't yes, know yes yes sir uh, now that you brought that up i think carl's food is amazing you like carl have you yeah, uh, yeah carl's great i love food, carl uh, when i have people coming in from jersey i have them stop at carl's place yeah really yeah yeah uh when it's carl very old to, school carl used to bring the food in yeah for us when we would have a, a, a vacation, pre-vacation show yeah. or something. And funny guy. He's a, great. Nice guy. A good food. Yeah, I, I like Carl. Uh, I like him. He's a good guy. What about Sherrod? Sherrod, I like Sherrod, too. Well, I think I he's a Sherrod funny too. guy. Yeah, uh, yeah we, we bump in each other down at the stand every so uh, often and, uh, you know, other other places. You but, say uh, bump. You a bump. A, a little few bumps. In, in yeah, the bathroom yeah. on the back of the toilet. All right. The toilet bowl. Now you are like yeah. Bannon. So now, you're getting along. <laughs> Trump doesn't party at all. No, no, he doesn't drink. He doesn't yeah. smoke. He doesn't do. What do does anything. he do? What does he do? He's like the old Adam Ant <laughs> song. It's uh, now when you say you saw Trump coming uh, a mile away. Yeah. If you were in New York for any length of time, we saw this guy. We were intimate yeah. with Donald Trump in New York as New Yorkers for decades. Yeah, and uh, and we knew what he was all about. We, he was on the news. It wasn't like this guy popped up out of nowhere. Yeah. He was on the news, and it was usually some kind of wacky story. Yeah, it was always nuts. Yeah, so the fact that he's in the White House now, anyone that has any expectations that he was going to change oh. is batshit crazy. The That's why I say, good, this is what I elected. When when I see him someday, I'll get up, and I'll go, oh, my God, Black Mirror. It's Trump <laughs> from the 80s. You know what I mean? It's Trump from the 80s. It is. And he was cr always crazy. crazy. Some, somebody I'm going to try to, uh, I think it was Christian Finnegan said, he. we always considered Trump the same way as Naked Cowboy. You know what I mean? Right, just a just fixture. Fixtures that people know. But <laughs> it's always amazing. By the way, uh, Naked Cowboy, I just heard, appointed Secretary of Defense. Not bad. Just in. Not bad. Yeah. Well, we don't know what happened to Chris Christie and the other old friends. What happened to America's mayor? America's mayor was with him every moment. Rudy Giuliani was connected at the hip to and Donald then, Trump. And then disappeared. 
gone. Yeah. Chris Christie. Remember the dunce standing behind Trump giving yeah. the speech and Christie's standing there. How, and we're all like, what is he doing? Well, I guess he's going to get some high-level position if, uh, right. if Trump gets elected. All of them. Out. You fired. He did the you fired thing. He's continuing doing The Apprentice in the White House. You, um, you and Nick DiPaolo are the same. Where you like, you just want Trump to fight with the media, and you don't mean that. Just He's that whatever he does, that's that's my, great. My whole thing from the beginning, right when he came down that escalator <laughs> and said, great "I'm running for president of the United States of America." That second, I'm like, yes. Please, at least one term, because I wanted every politician to go, we fucked these people so bad that mm -hmm. they put him in office. That's how bad we did our job. It's like it's like some guy thinking he's next in line for the, the vice presidency in a company. Mm -hmm. and, and the board of directors is so angry with the way the companies run. They go, really, you're in line, and then you, and then you. We're getting the mailroom clerk. He's now the vice president of the company because you guys stink. All right, so let's do this. Yeah. Let's just take the fucking keys of the White House, chuck them over the fence at Bellevue, whoever catches them, new president. All right? Let's do that. And then this is why yeah. when Twitter talks about Ron Bennington, the word genius comes up. Brilliant. Well, I'm all it's right. Because of these types yeah. of, of opinions. Let me tell you, I'm all right with you. This is an alt right show. It's an alt right. It's alt right now. <laughs> and I don't know. I'm Bannon. You're Trump. That's uh -huh. a But I, this has been a great time for me. I'm into the Bitcoin. I've got nothing but Bitcoins. Bitcoin, Everything. You're all about Bitcoin now. My Bitcoin became bit dollars thanks to Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Yeah. Everything's up under Trump. Yeah. Everything is uh, up. Bitcoins, thousands of percent uh, gains the market. Treasonous is what Bannon said. Treasonous. In, in, and I notice it's being printed in those quotation marks because there's nothing that his kids could have done speaking to some Russian that would... Uh, uh, be treason, actual treason, but, prosecutable treason. But this is what Bannon said, and he's got the information. And he also, and, and did you see how hard Trump came back today? Oh, I like did. Within an hour. He, his, yes. Fuck you, motherfucker. He said not only did yeah. Bannon lose his job, yeah. he's lost his mind. That's This yeah. is the president <laughs> yeah. tweeting out. We have a couple of uh, yeah. the tweets from uh, the Trumpster. Go to the one where he calls him a pockmarked bitch. That was my, <laughs> I like that a lot. Uh, uh, Trump torched uh, Bannon, yeah. Uh, when he was fired, he not only lost the job, he lost his mind. The full statement here uh, from the President of the United States. That's what it says. Uh, Steve Bannon has nothing to do with me or my presidency. When he was fired, he not only lost his job, he lost his mind. Steve was a staffer who worked for me after staffer. I already won the nomination by defeating 17 candidates, uh, often described as the most talented field ever assembled in the Republican Party. Now that he's on his own, Steve is learning that winning isn't as easy as I make it look. Is this guy great? Uh, Steve had very little to do with our historic victory, which was delivered by the uh, forgotten men and women of this country. Yet Steve had everything to do with the loss of the Senate seat in Alabama, uh, held for more than 30 years by Republicans. Why, did, um, did Steve uh, thrust that uh, young girl on, uh, yeah. on the uh, senator? Uh, Steve doesn't represent my base. He's only in it for himself. Steve pretends to be at war with the media, which he calls an opportunity par opposition party. Yet he spent his time at the White House leaking false information to the media to make himself seem far more important than he was. It is uh, the only thing that uh, he does well. Steve was rarely the one on one on in one on one meetings with me and only pretends to have had influence to fool a few people with no access and no clue. whom He helped write uh, phony books. We have many great Republican members of Congress and candidates who are very supported, supportive of the Make America Great Again agenda. Like me, they love the United States of America. Mm. Wow. That, he, he really did. And this was like right after. Right after, yeah. Bannon uh, came. He had to nip that in the bud, as they say. 
Um, they're also saying, and this has, I don't have this confirmed, uh, he shot two nu- nukes into the bomb cyclone. Uh, that has happened. That uh, it, If that works, if we could stop a bomb <laughs> cyclone with uh, a nuke, I'd be a happy right, man. Right. He said uh, uh, his ratings for The Apprentice better than the ratings for Bomb Cyclone on any news channel. He is true. Uh, he is right about that. No, better than, look, they're showing frozen uh, uh, fountains in Texarkana, Arkansas. Texarkana. Every time I hear that, I think of that old movie back yeah, in the day where that murderer went around and he killed people in Texarkana. Uh, there, the fountains are frozen. What are we going to do? How are people going to enjoy a fountain? Yeah. If those Bomb Cyclone is here. There it is. Raleigh is getting hit by bomb cyclone. Temperatures 53 degrees in Tampa. Here's what I understand uh, is that there, we've switched the weather with Russia. That's where we fucked is up. Is that what happened? What went on in Trump Tower? And you're hearing that from the alt-right. <laughs> We're, we could, do you realize that we could move ahead of Bannon now? Right. We could we, move ahead of him. So were you saying that uh, some of those backroom deals made yeah. in Moscow and in some of the Trump Tower right. uh, rooms were to trade weather? Yes. Like, we'll help you get elected, but we, we're going to need some balmy Orlando-type weather yeah. in Moscow. And I'm sorry, but uh, Tampa's going to have to get uh, Moscow weather. Well, Tampa's got 53 degrees. They've called off school for the rest of the week. <laughs> um, and they're hoping they could have sweaters sent in from the north. But they will. If it gets chilly, they'll, they'll call off school. Like, it will we'll stop snow- everything. Yeah, it was and a then- snow day. What about uh, what about the orange crops? I'm I'm uh, very heavily invested <laughs> in orange uh, juice. Of course you are. Frozen concentrated orange juice. Very heavily invested. I need those crop reports because I need to know if they're frozen. Yeah. Then I'll I'll have to uh, what sell? Yeah. I'll sell. Right. And if and everybody not, will be running around you, with run around. Things. I'll I'll fill out the paper. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. I uh, I'm mining bitcoins myself. And are you? I have a Bitcoin miner at home. And people laugh. They laugh and go, oh, Anthony has a miner in his bedroom. Uh, no, it's spelled differently. Uh, They're all, that's uh, alt-right humor. That is alt-right humor, and that's our humor. That's our type of humor. Yeah, they, uh, yeah I, I have it. I, I, I have two windows in one of the, the rooms in my house open, yeah. just open. And the Bitcoin miner's running, and the room is warm. Nice. It's, it's crazy. I, I'm I'm going to take it to the city here in the apartment. I got to do this. Take it to the apartment where I don't pay for electricity and they don't heat the place. Everyone's got the space heaters. Right. I'll just run the Bitcoin miner there. Uh, oh, do you charge? What neighborhood are you in? 1917. Um, <laughs> where is this that they don't have heat? It's that's against the law. Bang on the pipe. It's against the law not I've, to have heat. I've uh, tried to use the party line telephone to yeah. call the superintendent. I keep getting Ralph Cramden. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a very old uh, school building. Good. Very slow elevator, no heat. <laughs> you got to plug. Is there it. anything worse than a slow elevator? It is terrible. It's the worst thing that you could have. And then uh, it it doesn't have none of the lights work, like the floors and the up yeah. down button. So you stand there and you don't know if it's coming. Yeah. I want to see a progress report that that thing is on its way up or down. You hit it and just go. I hope it's working today. And sometimes it's not. You got eight flights upstairs, you know. Well, you got the last sixteen thousand dollar apartment in New York, so you should be so. happy with it. <laughs> Mrs. Monacati lives yeah. next door. By the way, we're using that uh, apartment as the home of the alt right. Right. Right here at Compound a, Media. It's a safe house. Are we going with my T shirt? Cernovich. It's you, a safe house. Use alt wrongs, we alt rights. I want us to get on that and stay on it. Stay on the alts wrongs and alts rights. Yeah. I want to call it alt correct. Right. We're alt correct. Well, yesterday, it seemed like it was us against everybody. Well, Owen, Owen against- Benjamin is a very yeah. passionate, very heated yeah. uh, guy. He, he, uh, he likes uh, He talking. fired us up, too. We were, he did. we were ready to ride. We were ready to midnight ride last night. He did fire us up a little yeah. bit. He has a problem. With transgendered children, that's his cause. That's his his whole uh, life. Now. Has he done anything about it, or is he just talks about it? He's around. He went and saved one of these. I don't know if he's kidnapping children that uh, are are taking hormones. I had never heard the story, so well, I was baffled by it. Very young children, uh, some as young as the age of four, mm-hmm. that have decided, 
uh, in between shitting their own pants. Right. They have made a, a conscious decision in between one day wanting to be a fireman and the next day wanting to be a cat. Yeah. They have decided that they want to be a, a different gender. Yeah. So a lot of these little boys say, hey, I want to be a girl. And the parents, because it's 2018 now, yeah. uh, just love this. Because now they could go to the PTA and the parents around the neighborhood and go, oh, by the way, my child is gender fluid. Mm. Transgender. Where and, and the other parents look at their kids and go, you piece of shit. What, what, I guess you like girls? Uh, and it, it's terrible. They feel terrible that they have kids that are their own gender that they were born with. And they love this now. They love that they could parade but why, their but why would trans we kid around. Why do we care? Well, I mean, uh, I don't care if a kid learns math. When people bring up core or whatever, I'm like, fuck those kids. You don't care about the I common just, core? I, 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 no. I that was a do, big issue. I couldn't ago. do math then. I, can't I don't do want to do it now. I don't want to help a kid do math. Get this. Do what I did. Skip this, school. Here's my math machine. What is that? It's my magical math machine. I hit a button, mm -hmm. and and I could do all kinds of math I never would have dreamt right. about doing on my own. That's it. It's By the way, did you dress up when you were a kid? I dressed up like a cowboy, right? But not like the cowboy that you would see in the Old West. I saw pictures. I dressed like a cowboy you'd see in a gay bar. I was just... <laughs> There was like a like the village red, people yeah, type yeah. cowboy. I don't know what. I don't know where I got this outfit. <laughs> and I was walking around <laughs> like I was a prancy little cowboy. Yeah. And you grow out of it. No one screamed at me. He's not really a cowboy. Right. Was, who cares? But they weren't uh, uh, per, like permanently uh, injecting you with something that but might. Do you think that would, that a doctor does that? You can't get that done. You would, there's oaths to be taken. Right. I think I, I would. Think these are hermaphrodite kids. You think that you would have to before you could give them. Got to kind of flip a coin at yeah. that point and go. Ah, you got to go one way or the other, yeah. kid. And you're in the. You're outside. I hope, boy, but I don't know what it's going to be. Yeah. I don't want what my well, teenager's is going to be. I personally don't care what anyone does. Especially with their own kids, I could give a shit. There are plenty of fucked up kids that are raised uh, what would have been considered 1950s tradition. Amen. Amen to that. Amen. Uh, but I think certain things encroach on our society. Mm, as and what it does is it 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 uh, uh, undermines our traditional values. I think. Hold on, are we in the old South? What are you talking about? <laughs> Who gives a <laughs> shit? You don't even have a Christmas tree, you prick. What I do you love care? My Christmas tree. I have a big, giant Christmas tree yeah. in my house. I, I think I, it undermines traditional values that made this country America. This country is America and what it is because there are certain things in place that just really need to remain in place to keep it you don't believe that for america second. you don't believe that for i a actually second. do ronnie really you don't think that you think america could be anything and still be america uh, look we used to have a, a fucking phone attached to the wall in the kitchen i love it move on that's progress we're progressing I love, yeah, into but, the future but, but you you can't see every change as progress some change what do you want not church progress. do you go to church every week oh no, no that would seem to be no. the cornerstone you think that's the thing. cornerstone what is what is the cornerstone i don't think church is the cornerstone but i think uh, a lot of um what what has been popular religions in this country over the course of the years and still in people uh you know right and wrong Good and bad, things like that, that are traditional American values, kind of a, you know. And, and I think if you you start undermining that, it would mean a lot more if you went to church every week, no. and if you had a nice wife and a, you and, think? and the children, then you could get you away just, with this act. I can't say yeah. do as I say, not as I do. Oh, no, my dad used to use that yeah. one on me all the time. But well, dad, that's the you did. By the way, you're in the tradition of that dude. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> you're a long night of that. Uh, my dad was great with yeah. that shit. Do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. I don't know, uh, Ronnie. I just, uh, I recall America in, a day, in the days of yore uh, where we were was... proud of our nation. Uh, now, when you were growing up, right? Yeah. yeah. 
We had riots, race riots. We had Vietnam riots. East Northport. We were sh yes, there was. You were just too little. East Northport, Long Island. It was know nice. It. The birds you, were chirping. You were too we young to know it. That's what's crazy about people. We were shooting fucking presidents back then. Shooting religious leaders. I, I hear you. Yeah. I watched the documentaries. Um, so yeah. it not, this thing never existed. Yeah, well, that was the beginning of what turned this into this odd PC kind of um, uh, evil, making, making American traditionalism evil. Right. You know, that was the beginning of it. It's with the riots and assassinations and, and uh, you know, all, all that horse shit, Ronnie, mm -hmm. that I like to call horse shit. The, uh, well, it's brilliant. I mean, that's a brilliant thing that you came up with. You like my I just take? think a lot of it is made up, man. I think, think? I think it is. I think a lot of it, when people get into saying the country used to be greater, I don't know if it ever did. Yeah. You know, it's about the same. I mean, we, there's some good stuff. There's some bad stuff. Do you think uh, that, that America could stop being America in everything but name? Do you think it could just not be not be recognizable as this amazing country it's supposed to be? In time, I mean, you know, and I'm not talking next week or anything. Yeah. But in time, just in name, it'll be America, but unrecognizable as uh, what made it great. Do you think this would be recognizable now by anybody who lived, let's say, <sighs> 1900? Or I think it's well, all. Well, again, technology-wise, yeah. I think that would freak a lot of people out. Yeah. They'd be walking around going, well, do we still have democracy? Ah! Yeah. Ah, giant bird! Right. They'd just I freak think, out. I think even back when you act like it was so great, when most people were farmers, right. I don't think, I think they were just like, if it doesn't watch rain. The grapes of wrath. If it doesn't rain, we don't eat. Right. And let's have more children because most of them die. <laughs> we need enough of them to live to pull these sleds around. I don't think they were like, and remember, this, I think particularly our generation, he <laughs> lied to us so much right. about this being the greatest country. No one ever said, we did really good in the 1950s because we had dropped bombs on the Japanese and Germans. <laughs> we, we, they had nothing. And we still had stuff. Right. The English had nothing. That uh, that meant we won. Yeah. We had stuff. We blew up all their stuff. Right. We won. We were great. And we were the only guys on our side that weren't attacked. Right. France and, it, you know. At that it, point. Well, yeah. Hawaii. Well, Hawaii, that was a terrible day. That, uh, you know, but. You're right. We we had two pretty uh, substantial oceans between uh, yeah. us and the uh, situation at hand, and uh, it worked out well for the old U.S. of A. We we um, uh, profited that, off of the war. A lot of that is luck more than anything. Oh, of course. But then yeah. for some reason they turned around and said to us, children, you are the blessed. You know what I mean? You live in the greatest. And we just said, yes, of course we do. Doesn't that... Um, does that mean anything? Was it all just a big lie? Was that post-war euphoria and, and feeling like we living in a, a utopian society? Was that just all horse shit? Well, I mean, it was because of what had happened. That There was endless money. The jobs were growing. The suburbs were being born. All the, all the houses in the suburbs were brand new. Right. And also, if you look at it, everyone in my neighborhood made the same kind of money. There wasn't like rich and poor <laughs> yeah, in true. my neighborhood. And it was true of the whole suburbs. None of us, and I don't think any of our parents wanted to be rich or thought they were going to be rich. They just wanted to do okay. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. No one wanted to be rich or famous. Right. Like if you got rich, uh, you were very proud of it. And people yeah. were like, oh, he got rich. But no one like needed to be rich right. or famous. No, never dawned on and adults. And now everyone wants rich and fame. They want, they want everything. And it's, uh, I, I think that's a problem. Right. But again, like. But we were closer when we were kids in the suburbs, we're closer to being socialists than anything else. We're, all of our parents made about the same amount of money. Right. Our houses pretty much looked the same. We had the same clothes, the same. Nobody had to have really expensive shoes. Yeah. Like if some, <laughs> if I asked for something that my dad said was too much, it was like $3 more, <laughs> not $300 more. 
That is so true, man. I remember wanting something that was just a few bucks right. and, and hearing no. No. No, you not. can't have it. And look and just go, it's literally like a little toy airplane. It's two dollars and ninety-five yeah. cents. Nope. Can't afford it. What am I what am I? Made of money? And yet we now act like capitalism is the only make more, get more, do more. And you can see people aren't happier. You know what I mean? You can see you don't go to work and you're like, oh man, this is so great to work here. What's driving this? Is it a, is it a, a like Alex Jones say, the globalists? Yeah. Obviously the globalists uh, want us at each other's throat, people. Is it that or I, is it uh, just the way things worked out? I think the way, th I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with the Reagan years. And you remember, yes. we found out about Trump during the Reagan years. He was like, hey, lifestyles of the rich and famous. That's, I think that's the first time I saw that dude. Yeah, the you 80s know? were right. like uh, the, uh, what's his name? Uh, Michael J. Fox playing uh, Keaton. What's his name? Yeah, yeah. At, uh, Alex P. Keaton. That show, right. the 80s was all about money and, yeah. you know, coke. Yeah. And uh, Coke. Yeah. Money. More Coke. Yeah. So you think uh, that that seed was kind of planted it started, in the Yeah, 80s. I think it started there. I don't know why people want to get so famous now or Internet famous or. You yeah. Know. Boy, isn't that something? The second people got the ability to transmit themselves to yeah. a mass of people, they all just did it. They did it immediately. Just about everyone decided I need to put my kids and my pets and my food and everything up on this this platform that that everyone could see. And then they wanted to be paid for it. Yeah. I want to be paid for being my home movies. I want to get money for my home movies. <laughs> it uh, used to just be, yeah. Your dad or someone would go around with yeah. the, the eight millimeter movie camera. I got plenty of those from yeah. when I was a kid. And and just and now and that was only watched by your family and most of them begrudgingly, you know. You'd pull out to be a problem, big yeah. screen, yeah. And and the projector, you'd have to thread the film, and then you'd all sit there and watch these movies, and then someone people decided everyone wants to see these, and we don't. No, we really don't. No, but don't it's a, a fuck. it's a big thing now. I don't know. Our guest, boy, if you think Owen was a a, a, a hit. We're going to be alt-right, are we? Uh, we're not going to be very alt-right. Yeah. Uh, uh, Colin Flaherty. Uh, he's got colinflaherty.com. Uh, let's bring him in. He's a tall drink of water. Uh, you only also, have tall guests, I noticed. Like here. Owen. He was 6'7 yesterday. I know. Owen Benjamin was on... Uh, uh, he was on uh, just uh, just before uh, this, the uh, 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 Your Welcome program yeah. with uh, Michael Malice. And he was sitting there. Take a seat, sir. He was sitting there, and uh, they had to adjust his seat ridiculously low because Michael is a, a, a slight man. Yeah. Michael Malice is a slight man, and Owen is very giant, and it looked ridiculous. Mm. So they lowered his seat down, and it looked even more ridiculous. So uh, watch that. It's on demand. Uh, how are you, sir? Happy to be here. Happy to be on on the air with the, the great one, Mr. Bennington. Oh, thank you very Ron much. That's nice. Bennington. Well, welcome to the Alt Right Show. I know. <laughs> I uh, oddly enough, uh, Ron, you'll probably remember this. Uh, mm. Odd, oddly enough, I used to wear a hat every day when I broadcast. Oh, I do remember hat. that. Now, my two guests wearing a hat, I am not. It's amazing. But it's winter. You should have a hat. I on should have some type. I wear a hood now. Mm -hmm. I have one of these jackets, these Canadian geese jackets yeah. that um, Keith and his lovely wife, Ange, got me for uh, Christmas last year. This thing is like you have an apartment with you. Like, like, like it's cold. Some, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a commuter, yeah. honey. I know that. And uh, I have to sometimes stand on that Jamaica platform for the Long Island Railroad for a good 10 minutes. And that wind comes howling through there. All of us guys drinking the coffee and eating the uh, ham and eggs. I like to say the hawk is flying low today, and then I nudge <laughs> the guy next to me. <laughs> is that? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and I put that hood up and zip that thing up. I just feel like I'm in a house. I'm home with the heat on, and I'm just waiting. And then the train comes, and I'm in there. It is the greatest jacket ever that I've ever owned. And that includes the snorkel jacket that I wore when um, I punched Boomer Sison in the head. 
I had a big snorkel jacket on. You know how everyone took yeah. their, takes their jacket off when they fight? I'm like, fuck that. This is padding. I'm leaving it on. Right, smart. Getting this big mook. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I punched him in the head, broke my arm, and then he punched me, and I, uh, went, I went right down. I had always heard that he uh, broke his arm. You broke your arm? No, I broke my arm, punching him square in the forehead. Yeah. I, I got the first punch in of the fight, the big fight. It's a big brick head. And bam, I hit him, and, and my arm went numb. I woke up the next morning. It was swollen. I went to Dr. Dr. Fuchs, my yeah. pediatrician. Who was uh, oddly enough uh, could not find any family history on her, and she spoke with a very thick German accent. Mm. I uh, she wanted wanted to change my eyes blue one day. Mm. Uh, said she learned it somewhere. But uh, uh, the ulna and radius, both bones in my arm, busted from punching Boomer Esiason in his fat head. Am I the only Anthony Comia fan who doesn't know why you're duking it out with Mr. With, with Boomer? Uh, I called him Norman. I I, I called him Norman, which was uh, even back then you didn't you didn't do that. He was Boomer, and is that uh, his real name Norman. His real name is Norman Esiason. He was the Boomer, and uh, I I figured uh, I was gonna get uh, my friends to laugh. That's good. That's funny stuff. Though. Like going around the corner and going no. Norman, and then running away, yeah. so he wouldn't know who it was because I'm not stupid. Uh, so I did that. I turned, and one of his friends was in the hallway we were in oh. and he just kind of looked and did that like you're so fucked i was like shit that's the guy you should have hit i should have hit him yeah. right boomer's fucking wingman i was taught uh, as a young person go looking for the smallest person or a girl and hit them hit them yeah yeah i made a, a fun of a girl's uh, tits once this girl jerry yeah and uh, she had come back uh, into the sixth grade, I guess it was, and I said, hey, nice tits, Jerry. Good. She kicked me square in the balls. I went down on the floor weeping. But weeping, see, fucking but you, Jerry. But you got that line off, and it was well worth it. It you was know? well I mean, worth it. classic line. It was legendary <laughs> uh, at the time. So you mocked her for having breasts, basically. Yeah, I Good. showed her. Good. I sure showed her. There's a class picture of me somewhere with Jerry and her those very tits that, yeah. I, uh, that I called I'd out. I'd love to see it. In the sixth grade. It's Anthony's sixth grade class picture. And uh, I know we have it. It is always amazing, like, the first person who gets tits just turns everybody's world upside down. It's the first person that gets tits and the last girl that gets tits. Oh. The first girl that gets them is, hey, big-titted animal. Yeah. And the last one is uh, the itty-bitty titty committee. Mm -hmm. If you uh, zoom in to the girl uh, 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 under the black dude. <laughs> under the black all dude. all you need to know. That was Jerry. Uh, boy, that is a real HD pick, isn't it? Yeah. And you can see she's getting, you know. Nice tits, Jerry. She's she's hunched yeah. over because she wants to hide those beautiful <laughs> new tits of hers. Those are right off the showroom floor. Brand new. <laughs> Brandy new. Yeah. Still have that new tit smell. Yeah. <laughs> it's Corinthian leather. <laughs> yes. And uh, she kicked me in the balls. And yeah. what an ominous figure I, uh, I, I cut uh, in my little jumper uh, to the left. <laughs> That's oh, that me. girl is you? <laughs> that girl. I swear to God. I almost said, who's the Puerto Rican girl? <laughs> now, at this point, my parents wanted to uh, give me hormones. Uh -huh. They wanted to turn me into a girl. Or a boy. Uh, or a boy. Make a choice. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, quite the figure in my little jumper. That's uh, when, when someone yelled at you, nice cunt, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I think she kicked me in the, in the balls to see if I had them. Why were you, what did you, look at that outfit. You just got uh, uh, put on Zoom. Was that it? <laughs> that, a kid who was it on was, Zoom could wear that. It was from the Laura Ingalls collection <laughs> at uh, Sears. Uh, <laughs> it really is uh, bad. Now look at everyone else, though. I mean, you know, stripes were big. Everybody's parents made the same amount of money. Look, there you go, that, same that thing. really is. You're, yeah. you're right. There's uh, a lot of kids wearing that sweater vest. Unfortunately, mine is pulled down low enough to look like a little dress. Uh, so that, that could be an issue. But a lot of them had their own little... Uh, I wish we could see your saddle shoes. <laughs>
I, I, I don't know what type of shoes I was wearing. But also, you know, that class picture day was yeah. very important back uh, right. then. It was, uh, you know, you got dressed up. Sure you did. There was no Photoshopping. Now, yeah. they Photoshop a background. Oh, where are you? You're in Paris. Yeah. Now, what the fuck? Back then, it's smile, and if you're sneezing or your eyes are shut or you got a big zit, <laughs> that's it. That was you for a year. Uh, is that a better shot? Oh, okay. Zoom in on Jerry's tits. This is a much better uh, shot here. There it is. See? Just, uh, just pay attention to her hunchback for a while. Slumping. What's she doing? Fucking, was she ready to pour fucking oil down on the townspeople? She's people? so embarrassed by her brand new boobs. And look at the other girls. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. The, uh, that, that one is like a Russian spy, I think. Yeah. Uh, and then down there, the girl in the white that's sitting up front. Yeah. If you go to the front row, she was cool. She was like a wild, hippie child. I'm sure she was dating ninth graders by then. She had no time for you and your oh, yeah. jumper. And you could almost see her training bra through that off-white uh, kind of thing she's got going. Uh, now, me, if you go to my, my costume here, uh, you'll see purple and red were the colors of the day. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what... Uh, I'll tell you this: on. the cock-sucking lips you had were amazing. Oh, dude, what? with my uh, with my uh, curly hair. I think you were seeing that future realtor next door to you. Uh, <laughs> Look at that guy. <laughs> Looks like he's real. Should be handing out fucking business cards to kids in the fucking men's <laughs> room. A future realtor. I mean, that guy's never had a good fucking day. <laughs> Don't tuck in, man. Let the shirt out. <laughs> Fucking relax, dude. He's never had a good day. No. And then up top, if you go to the top row, that, of course, was Smitty Dunbar. Yeah. Smitty Dunbar was the, the black kid. Yeah. It was a very, very uh, white school. Smitty uh, used to come in every day and bum a, a, a stick of gum. Right. He'd come in and go, yo, man, you got a stick? And uh, I'd have to give him a, a stick of gum. Uh, Michael Harris was a good friend of mine. He's uh, the kid with the big dome of hair. Uh, and Who's then, the kid? That, the alien next to him. Yeah. What yeah. is that fucking space suit? <laughs> he looks like Ilya Kuryakin. <laughs> that guy. Ilya Kuryakin. Yeah. Uh, and then Eric Kafiro was the big fat kid. Yeah. And then one year he... What was his nick? His nickname was Diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, Diabetes! <laughs> stick of gum! I believe, I believe back uh, in the 70s when yeah. this was taken, the proper term was fatso. Yeah. Hey, get a load of fatso over there. Uh, Eric Afiro came in, I believe it was the next year, svelte, skinny, yes, lost all AIDS. the weight. He was the first AIDS case. He was, he was patient zero yeah. for, for AIDS. Oh, he uh, was the one that actually fucked the monkey. Right. He, Eric Cafiro fucked the monkey. Fuck yeah. the monkey. Your great, great, great grandmother fucked <laughs> the monkey. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, there they are. But uh, that's the collection of... Um, Fucking dimwits. Look at that class. Yeah, yeah. God only knows what happened. I mean, now we would call that special needs. Back then, <laughs> there wasn't a term for it. There wasn't a term. You guys went to the zoo every fucking day. <laughs> The top row the, the, with a pointer, is that a girl or a boy? That is a boy. There's no way to know. That uh, is some type of boy. Yeah. He signed this picture. Yeah, baby. For everybody. Look at this fucking guy. Yeah. He, he looks, uh, I, I believe, um, oh, yeah, that was Ricky Springfield, a good buddy of mine. <laughs> That's Ricky, Ricky Springfield. Look at the maniac, the fucking redhead with the glasses. Oh, yeah. Look at that fucking uh, shooter. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking guy was uh, in. The, we I was uh, in the woods. Yeah, and we were bur we were burning uh, uh, foam rubber from a couch cushion. Yeah, because when you burnt it and it melted, it went it made a cool sound. Yeah. Well, um, some of it got on my wrist, and, and like a little napalm. dot, a little dot. I still have a scar from it right there, and it was like napalm. Yeah. I screamed. I, I, I tore my clothes off and ran naked down the street like that little yeah. like that little Fook girl in uh, Vietnam. The amount I of was... times I jacked off to that picture. 
Ah, shit. And, and uh, probably as this was being snapped, she was uh, yeah. running down that uh, sidewalk. That fucking redheaded kid, yeah, he, he looks look like, like a school shooter. he's just like, you motherfuckers! <laughs> Who's fucking carrot top now? Fucking beautiful, man! It's fucking beautiful! <laughs> so, um... What we need it was a good guy with a gun. Yeah, a That's good guy with a gun. A good guy with a gun. Stop the All bad right. guy with the All gun. Right. Colin Flaherty. Uh, <laughs> Colin's just <laughs> here watching, yeah. I guess. Uh, uh, no, no, uh, uh, just school stories for you, Colin. What kind of a, what kind of an upbringing did uh, you have? Probably the same as yours. Same, same suburban uh, kind of. No, lower middle class city kid, Wilmington, Delaware. Oh, Wilmington. One day the neighborhood was all white. Next day the neighborhood was all black. Oh, it did the old changeover. Wilmington is now one of the toughest cities in America. It? It's got that thing where you think it's a small city, but there's more deaths there than in New York. Yeah, you got a little fact there. God bless. <laughs> God bless. So I, so I like living there. Uh, I live up, <laughs> uh, where I grew up. I like living there because I see all the violence. Are you still the there? Craziest. Yeah, I moved back a couple years ago. Oh, you California. did? So I spent the last 35 oh, years in California. Breach. But when I started writing about this, I stayed there because you see all the violence mm. and the denial. That's what I write about in my books and on my YouTube. Well, violence and denial. Why don't you just move to Claymont? It's so uh, close and it's so nice. You know the you know the you know yeah. the neighborhood. That's sure. Joe Biden's oh, yeah. old neighborhood. Sure. Honey Bee's like uh, like a fucking atlas. Well, I, you know you could take a ride around Beaver Valley. You know the valley, right? It's right there. Nice houses. Me and my friends, we'd skip school. We would go riding around looking at these mansions, and we'd go like this. Fuck that place. I would never live there. <laughs> and it was bigger than our whole neighborhood. <laughs> that was a superiority thing. And right. then we also said. That any time that we saw something with a fence, we said a DuPont lived there, and they intermarried because they didn't want to share their money. And we'd always say that the DuPonts they, had freaks for kids. Kids are like yeah. fucked up. And I never, I don't even know how he came into those facts. The DuPonts. It, that, that's, not, that's not a myth. That's a true story. Oh, see, there you go. There, there it is. The DuPonts fucked yeah. each other. So much. So much. They, so much, they did so much, much fucking of other DuPonts. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they used to say the DuPonts would say, "It's Saturday. I'm going out for some Du Pussy," and all they would just walk down the hall. Yeah. I yeah. don't know why. <laughs> you claim that that's true, though, right? There's a book called Blood Relations. Yeah. The there you go. Ah. Yeah. The DuPonts. The first cousins married each other. Keep the money in. Mm. You married a DuPont. You married a cousin. They gave you a house. That's how they gave you the house and the money. But you had to keep the money in the family. Some of that chemical money, right? Isn't also, that what they did? Chemicals? chemicals what did they do? Yeah. Yeah. Now that's also uh, close to Newark, Delaware, which is spelled exactly the same as Newark. New Jersey. So Newark. You have Newark in New Jersey. Newark in Newark. Delaware. Discuss. <laughs> Discuss. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, go. Wow, well, that's uh, actually a uh, very interesting. Uh, you Is are, it? you are like an atlas. Uh, you just uh, you, you know, cities. You've been around. You're worldly. Uh, you're otherworldly. You know, uh, when you're at the Hotel Dupont, enjoying a nice little the Dupont, the beautiful hotel. You live. You went back to Wilmington, though. Yeah, so I live about a mile from the Hotel Dupont where mm -hmm. I grew up, and. Uh, all my neighbors, there are all, a lot, a lot of white people live there. But the white people who live there, they're all kind of the social justice warriors. All of them are victims of black criminality. Oh, all of them are victims, but they look at it and they just pretend <laughs> it's not happening. They call the cops. The cops don't show up. They call the cops again. The cops go. This is the way this neighborhood is. My brother-in-law lives in the suburbs. He lives in Claymont. Nothing. Ha you have to move out there. Wow. And so, it, and, and so that's it's just black criminality has turned Wilmington from a, a pretty decent little hard-working, mm. charming town into some chocolate hellhole that you I mean, you wow. could. That came out of nowhere, chocolate hellhole. <laughs> right. yeah. Wow. You know, I was like, actually kicked my head back. Chocolate hellhole. I mean, we're all right, but That's, please. Um, I, 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 I got that in a, a box of Brax once. <laughs> uh, I took half a bite and put yeah. it back. The chocolate hellhole, not as good as the caramel. Jim Norton will stick his tongue into the chocolate hellhole. <laughs> and I admire that in him. He doesn't have to prove any other bravery to me. <laughs> I've seen it yeah. over at NEW. I've yeah, seen well, we, Jim Norton do it. 
pull some of those uh, chocolate hellhole uh, lickings, deep, deep, chocolate deep tonguings. But uh, Wilmington used to be uh, where uh, every boat seemed to be from, right? <laughs> like, uh, wasn't it like some kind of tax thing? It's a tax. It was like yeah. every boat was Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, all your corporate stuff, too. When you, yeah, when corporate you, stuff. Your first corporation, they go, we're going to put Wilmington, Delaware. Anthony Cormier, Inc. in Wilmington, Delaware. Right. I think you're absolutely right. It That's, was. It's true, because I did it. You did Everybody it in radio. And I'm the going, late uh, Bob Eatman. And I remember going, right. all right, this sounds nice, but are we going to get in trouble for this? Yeah, what does this mean? Yeah, because I don't live in Wilmington. Yeah, yeah. It's a chocolate hellhole, I said. <laughs> I, lo I love it. I've never well, heard. Wilmington was never nice. I mean, you got to go back, what, 60 years? We grew up, it was nice. What it years, was what years are you talking Everybody about? Everybody knew each other, 60s, uh, yeah. 60s and 70s. First time I lots, saw... Uh, lots of generations, lots yeah. of families, four or five families lived in the same neighborhood, and all of a sudden, yeah. one day, it just ended. Well, I, I was born in Chester, so the city changed very much. My parents still furious. You know how nice are, are it used to be. You know, I would just still get a call from my... They shut down the train station. <laughs> used to be able to take that train to 69th Street, Philly. I'm like, I know, Pop. <laughs> Dad. So Dad. When, when did you move out of Chester? Oh, I, when I was a kid, I moved to Chichester, uh, which, you know, people in Claymont would look up to. I'm just saying that. <laughs> um, but, you know, so you're, you're, you wrote a book about this? Oh, he wrote a few. Yeah. And the, That's like asking you, have you ever heard, have you ever been in front of a radio microphone yeah. before? Do you, oh, yeah. But but it's only you're you're upset about what happened in Wilmington. I'm not upset. I'm just yeah. telling you what happened. Yeah. I'm not upset that I'm sitting next to you. I'm just telling you what happened. Yeah. Ooh. So here's what happened. I document black criminality, black violence, wildly out of proportion, places like Chester, but I also document the other half, which is how reporters and public officials are in denial, deceit, and delusion about it. And how it causes so much damage. The big, the big guy over there was one of the first guys to read my book, give it national exposure. Really, kind of gave me a shot in the arm. Yeah. So I'm guessing on Long Island, you fellas had a little bit of experience with the fellas. Oh well, Long Island. Let's see. Uh, Suffolk County was uh, untouched for a while, and then uh, some neighborhoods. Oh my goodness, MS-13 is uh, running rampant now out in Suffolk County. I read about okay, it. So what about Chester? So the yeah. place you grew up in Chester, if you yeah. went back there right now, what would it look like? Uh, Chester is uh, a very impoverished place. Any other common organizing feature about Chester besides the fact that everybody well, The industry has gone. The, the work is gone. Anything they, else? It used to be a factory town. Anything else? Uh, you, if you're asking Are they closing me, all the factories down? Yeah, oh, no. Well, yeah, that's, it's very true. It is somewhat of a Springsteen song. The church that I was uh, baptized in, that's gone. That used to be the center of that neighborhood. When you talk about that, used yeah, to be just a crack house. The old resurrect. You know who was uh, from my neighborhood? It was Joe Klecko. Grew up. Joe Klecko from the the Jets, uh, the, Jets, the yeah. uh, New York Sack Exchange. And uh, Flathead is from my neighborhood. Frankenstein. Uh, no, this is a guy oh. who enjoys a party package or two, and is willing to get on a plane to do it. Wow. Yeah, so okay. That grew up in Chester. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was a white working class place, mm -hmm. maybe mixed. Now it's a chocolate city. It's a dangerous city. Way more dangerous than a lot of crimes. Well, we've got a casino so now. Let me ask you a question. What's that mean? <laughs> What's that mean when we ask you about what it's happening? You're saying it's all poor people. I say it's a black thing. You say it's a mm -hmm. poor thing. What's that mean to you? It does. I mean, it means that the industry is gone. It used to be Scott Paper. So all the people in Chester want jobs, except yeah. they just can't find them. Yeah. So if you go to the Chester Unemployment Office, there's going to be lines around the corner of black people going, I can't find jobs because racists like you two guys won't give me a job. Is that your worldview? Uh, I don't have a worldview about that. I haven't thought about it. I, I've never... I, saw, I, went, I saw that line in Chester. I saw some unicorns in that line. Once. Oh, okay. So it doesn't happen. I guess it does. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm going to say this is an alt-right show. I don't think we've looked much into the mulattoes and what they've done <laughs> yeah they have. like well, my president of the united yeah. states like my mom said to me they don't fit in either world discuss this is all right the uh president of the united states uh, the uh, last president was indeed a mulatto yeah we don't use that term anymore though we don't we don't we, say, we use a uh, high, high yellow yeah i think that's what we <laughs> That one I hadn't even heard. My grandmother said that one. Your grandmother? Yeah, I, I've heard a lot from my uh, yeah. my relatives. There's um, 
especially with the holidays just having passed, uh, I got together with some old uh, aunts and uncles and yeah. relatives and whatnot. And uh, boy, the vernacular. Yeah. Um, just a lost, like the uh, like the sea scrolls, mm -hmm. uh, written in a, a dead language that uh, rarely rears its head uh, these days. Sorry. Oh, there you go. Uh, I definitely want to talk about something we were getting into before, which is this seems to be a a an undermining of the traditional values of this great country. Mm. And we talked about some of these uh, th things that Owen Benjamin was talking about yesterday. The uh, the children. Trying to, you know, uh, just just shoehorn in this weird uh, uh, social justice agenda into our society now. You see it in commercials mm. and movies and TV shows. And uh, there's a boy here, young young child of ten, and apparently uh, he's uh, wants to open up his uh, own drag club just for children. Now this is the kind of stuff that I was getting at when I'm saying there seems to be a little bit of an issue here. They go, you know, if you want a, your kid to be a, a girl, if he's a boy or a boy, if it's your kid. Apparently, you do whatever the fuck you want with him. Uh, but this now takes to another level. Even Ronnie's got to agree with this. I would just say you found one kid who's opening up a, a store for drag. For a drag club. Like he wants to. Now, do you think this is okay? Do you think that's okay for you to take your son and, and gussy him up like this and, and, and put him out? First of all, it's sexual, sexualizing a child. That's what it's doing. Uh, look, look, I think uh, this looks like the Mummer's Day Parade to me in Philadelphia. The Mummer's Day Parade? We had a lot of feathers. Yeah, we had a lot of fancies. A lot of fancies. Yeah. They call them. Is that what they call yeah. them, fancies? Yeah, they were the Mummers and Shooters. Uh, in Philadelphia, <laughs> they have to say, don't shoot your gun. At midnight. Oh, really? Dad, uh, just up to like two years ago, shot his gun up into the Go pacemaker. Out just bam, bam, bam. The pacemaker, you can't shoot it off. So this oh, is the geez. this is the little drag kid. Now I'm I'm seeing more and more stories like this though. You, said, you know, there's not a lot. You know that there you are. Find a these few. things to make yourself crazy. No, that's not no, true. No. Hold on, hold it. If you go to schools, schools are t teaching people about. Tr t about transgender yes. people. Teachers are going to seminars about transgender stuff. It's very normalized. Very They're normalized. normalizing it to the point where it's not so much, hey, here's a lifestyle someone's choosing. It's presenting it to very impressionable young children who might think that day or week or month that that's what they want to do. And it will last and stay with them now uh, in pictures and things like uh, that. Let me just say this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You went to school. They um, tried to teach you algebra. Rumor has it. Did any of it stay with you? No. Well, you can't tranny teach, didn't teach kids. Me. You can't teach kids shit. Well, a tranny wasn't trying to teach yeah. me uh, uh, algebra. Yeah. But uh, this kid, look, this is just not. Uh, I I don't I I think this is some type of bad parenting right here. I'm not. You know, I don't focus on this kid. Like I said, you can look at me. In that cowboy fucking outfit that I had, and then when I wasn't dressed like a cowboy, I was either dressed as a sailor, yeah, or a fireman, or construction worker. <laughs> I was very close to that. If I would have had an Indian thing, I would have done it. Yeah, an Indian. That's yeah. uh, see, Ronnie, I I understand what you're saying because I, sometimes as I I'm, I'm racking my mind with all of this stuff, I think, what would Ronnie B think? Yeah. And Ronnie B would just go, why? But well, I don't why give a fuck. I, I don't really care. Why? I know, and, and I, 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 I envy that. But I also think, hey, but if everything is just, it builds up. Like, all right, that's one kid. Mm -hmm. But there are others. I've seen it. You're looking. Anthony, there's Anthony, another Anthony, problem. If you know, if you, anybody who knows what they actually teach in grade schools, including lots of stuff about race, including how all white people are racist, black people are relentless victims of relentless white racism, it's okay for kids to be dragged. If you actually see the books, yeah. you look at the seminars, if you go to the teachers' colleges and see what they're teaching the teachers, you would be astonished. You don't know what they do. It's crazy. No, I have no idea. Well, okay, well. I, know. <laughs> no, I mean, if I had... No, I've you don't know. That's all right. I, like, even when, I, when I, my kids were young and I went to PTA meetings... No, nobody the knows. Same Parents way don't know. I was in school. Parents don't you know. You just didn't care. It was just like, whatever, oh, no. please. You didn't and care. This. Now, if you read, if you read the books that the teachers are reading on how to teach the kids, it's astonishing. If you look at the people who are on school boards, they are the dumbest, least achievers out there. It's amazing what's going on in schools.
I have seen uh, some of the uh, people that are, are teaching and their, their ideology does seem to be very hard left. We are alt-right. Mm, yeah. That's what this show is. Almost too much. <laughs> think about Baltimore. 16 high schools in Baltimore. They don't have, they're black high schools. They don't have one kid, not one person, that can read above a third, read or write above a third grade level. So there's all these crazy stuff going on you in know schools. What? Their Nobody basketball knows. team is in state every year, and I never hear you. <laughs> there's other now, ways of being smart. I guess you got to take the uh, the bad with the good, yeah. the good with the bad. Uh, basketball. Now, as far as reading at any level, right? I mean, you see how uh, Anthony is dependent on his phone, or as I call it, pocket crack. Yes. And that thing is going to be reading to you soon within 16 months. Yeah. No one is going to read. Just like no one writes cursive today. No one has handwriting. I don't know what that is. Yeah. No one cursive does. Cursive writing. Or yeah. printing. They don't even teach that to kids now. They just, they just teach them. Vo no, that's done. It's voice. You're like, Alexa, oh. Alexa, do me a favor and write me up a report on the on the revolution. I uh, I don't like that. I, I have an Alexa. I, I'm going to ask for the weather. I'm going to guess you're a constitutionalist. I'm just, not, I'm just a guy who keeps my eyes you're open. You're just a regular guy. You're just a regular guy. You sit on a swivel. Yeah, I understand. You're a constitutionalist. I'm gonna. You, we put out 600, 700 movies a year in this country and have for the last 80, 90 years. How come there's never any fucking stuff about the Founding Fathers, right? How come we've never seen a Ben Franklin movie? We go back to the Civil War. Every year we got to watch a fucking English person doing, you know what I mean? Like in the 1600s or the Middle Ages. We never watch anything about the American Revolution at all. So, so like a, a, a mainstream feature film. Yes. Released in the movie theaters, not like on Nat Geo or something Thank like you. that. That well is observed. a movie. So the, so the alternate question is how many movies, how many black movies, mainstream black movies yeah, have there been that black thing in the really last quick. three years? I mean, yeah, you're right there. Yeah. So you're saying. So this, is like, this is like case A of yeah. denial, deceit, and delusion. I'm That's sitting me. right next to you. That's you. Because you don't know what you're talking about, but that doesn't stop you from talking. So I'm not one of those guys that sits there and listens to bullshit. Well, first of all, don't fucking come in here like. We're on the same fucking level with this. I was asked to be on his fucking show. I wouldn't be talking about race if it was up to me. Because you don't know anything what you're talking what about. Fuck why are you talking? If you don't, if you don't know what you're talking about, if you, if you don't know what Anthony you're talking Biden, about, why say it? I fucking made a joke because that's why Anthony fucking had me here. Guess but I forgot not, to laugh. What's that? Guess I forgot to laugh. I don't give a fuck, dude. I'm not fucking here to fucking be angry all the time. I'm, I'm telling Ant to go back to the way he used to be. What was that, Anthony? He was one of the funniest fucking people in the country. I'm still hilarious. Oh, my God. What a week. <laughs> what a fucking week this has been. Uh, let, me, let me look in my um, radio guy handbook. How, to, how you handle this situation. Well, what, what is the fucking problem? That I made a joke? Yeah, I don't know what the problem is. We we Ronnie does what Ronnie does, and uh, Colin does what Colin does, and uh, you know, oil and uh, water, I guess. Um, what am I, the enemy? No, Ronnie am never. I the fucking enemy? Ronnie never. I have a. Uh, around and fucking. No, Ronnie, come on. I have a uh, a deep love and respect for Ron Bennington over the course of the years. Me and uh, Ronnie have been compatriots and. Uh, uh, been on the battle lines of uh, many a radio station. Uh, so, no, of course not. You're not the enemy at all. You're not the enemy. Colin has his points. I, I think he's very... Uh, if it would help for me to be quiet... No. ...for his points, I'll, I'll no, gladly do it. No, not at all. Colin has his point of view on things, and, and some people share them, some people don't. And, it, you know, a lot, it's very, he's very passionate about it. And uh, it, well, Colin and I were going to go AARP fucking boxing here a second ago. It was, uh, it was going to be the world's oldest boxing match. It would have been, have been the world's shortest boxing match. There's no, tough guy? Come on. There's no reason to even insinuate that physical violence need take place on this program. My God. Oh, this fucking week already. And it's a short fuck week. Just tragedy after tragedy. I, um, I mean, what happened? 
We were, we were having fun. Yeah, I thought we were. You know, I guess I said a couple things. Yeah. Uh, I got a little out of line. No. <laughs> Roddy. I will let you guys speak. No, Roddy, Roddy, please. I'm not going to have you just sit here and not speak. And, and um, oh, my goodness. Just, okay, hold on. I know what to do. I'll Are you going to do your live do the old Opie. I'll do the old Opie trick. Take a call. Oh, <laughs> Tom. God. Tom. Yeah, hey. Man, I'm listening. It, it feels like I'm back at my Thanksgiving dinner with my family here. I'm sweating. I'm literally sweating here. What are you worried about? What went wrong? No, I just, uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't want um, bad ill will. I don't want ill will, you know. Go I was hoping to hear you, uh, Ron you, 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 talk about Elvis Presley going to Graceland. That's, that's what I want to hear. Yeah, uh, uh, Get rid of your caller because we can fix this. Here's the thing. You invited this gentleman on for a reason, right? Yes, yes. When, when... Have the conversation. I could be quiet. I don't have to be a wise ass and jump in. Have the conversation. No, but I like I, <laughs> there's the, the spaghetti on the wall. That's what my dad used to do during arguments. I would cry. You don't have to be nervous, all right? The second you get a feeling like you did yesterday about your mom, you get nervous. Don't. Talk to your guest. I, um, what would you like to ask your guest? In 20 years of doing this, I don't have a clue. And here's I a, don't have a clue. What's your book about? What to do here. I can talk about my stuff you know, from now until tomorrow morning and without stopping. I'll tell you what was interesting. Well, if you want to talk about my stuff. I, I mean, there was a big story this morning in the paper about how in Baltimore they think they need more cops. So I was prepared to talk about why that's kind of a, a ruse. So I, you know, so and my book is about black violence. I document it all over the country. How it's wildly out of proportion. That's the crazy part. But the that's the one crazy part. But the other crazy part is how reporters and public officials are constantly ignoring it, denying it, condoning, excusing, encouraging, even lying about it. Again, I document this stuff. There was a huge story down in Philadelphia three days ago. I just did a YouTube video on this. A guy named Hank. Hank, every, every station has kind of like one of these, like, I'm Hank, I'm the tough guy reporter, right? News guys. Hank goes to the camp mall in Camden, New Jersey, Cherry Hill Mall, and he goes, listen, the cops say there's going to be a big problem here in Camden. No, there's not going to be a problem. I promise you. Guarantee it. These kids are great kids. Day after, and he said, I promise yeah, you, was... no problem. Day after Christmas, a thousand black people rampaging through the mall, destroying property, defying police, fighting people, all on video. Could, could, I'll, I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a, a corporate decision. I'm going to make a, a, a a suggestion that I think would work out. We have we have gravely made an error in uh, mixing of guests today. I don't Colin, think so wait, at all. No, no, I Ronnie. Joke. Colin, would I, you would you be okay coming back at a later date? Of course. Very good. Absolutely. Colin, sit down for one second. Thank you. No. I just want one thing. Me and you. How would you solve this? Colin takes over. How are you going to solve this problem? Let me ask you a question. No, I'm going to ask. Okay, you. here's the here's the. I'll answer the question with a question. If Anthony were outside standing in the rain, how would you solve that problem? I would bring them inside. I'd tell them to get the hell out of the rain. So if somebody's going, if black people are going around committing an unbelievable level of violence, wildly out of proportion, why isn't the simplest solution the best? If you clonk somebody on the head, why aren't you going to jail? But yet we hear on, yet yet we hear on, I document how we hear like in Philadelphia, they say black people are relentless victims of relentless white racism. So they're not putting black people in jail for this anymore. Have you been to any jails? It's filled with black people. <laughs> Why? But, but for the reason that you said there are black people in jails. Why is that? What uh, There's only two reasons. Only two reasons. One, yeah. they're there because of white racism. Right. Or two. They're there because they got commit, caught committing some very nasty crimes. It's hard to go to jail. You know that. No, not really. Oh, people yeah. go to jail all the time. Very hard to go but to jail. What you're saying is we need to put all the black people in jail. No, just the ones, <laughs> who, just the ones who commit crime. I think everybody's on the same side there. Anybody who commits a crime goes to jail. So I think I'd, instead, I don't want you to... No, I, I honestly... you come all the way up here from Delaware? No, I'm, 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 I was up here anyway. Yeah. Honestly, I, I just feel I'm making a command decision here. That we will have uh, uh, Colin back at a later is, juncture 
Thank you, Colin. I could come back in a little No, later. no, Ronnie. Ronnie, please. Come on now. We, uh, yeah, we, we need to, uh, we need to uh, do the, I fucking, this, 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 2018, starting out great. Great. One dead mother in a fucking crazy ass show. Why does that make you so uncomfortable? We just had, this is what we always did our whole life, it was radio. Oh, but this is, I was always the one that could sit back and make jokes. Yeah. Opie had to deal with this. <laughs> It was now it was I finally fun. understand what Opie did. We're in alt <laughs> we're in alt right show. That's us now. We're trying we're taking on we're re- the minorities, I- the uh, sexual minorities. Look at there's children dressed up. Ronnie wearing feathers. We've got to do something about it. We need our guns. Well, that I agree with. No, Ronnie, we we are um we are definitely not an alt-right show. I could be honest with you there. Uh, over the course of, of the past even couple of years, or at least a year, I have really tried to rein back a lot of things that people have um, suggested. You yeah. know? Uh, and and I, I think I have. There's a lot of, look, look at all the fun. Well, look, look at all the fun. But let me smart explain. employee. Uh, mauled by a pit bull. By the way, story. Uh, let me also Peter, explain. Fucking a student. Uh, uh, let me explain this too with, with the thing with Colin. I wasn't upset about any political view he had. This is when he told me to, that I had to shut up. That you know what uh, I mean? No, I I understood and that. All of a sudden, you know, everybody's a little bit of a corner boy. That's you know what I mean? that's what I. I realize, you know, yeah. you're not you you you've listened to many different views over the course of your career, I'm certain. I'm from the same fucking neighborhood as this guy. <laughs> My neighborhood is all black. I'm not the neighborhood I, I was born into, but I'm not fucking freaked out about it. You know what I mean? Right. I've, that neighborhood turned poor as we went into middle class. Same as what happened to a lot of people here. Uh-huh. The uh, the the problem that you have is that you're not moving those people like people aren't moving up generation by generation. Yeah. That when the poor people went in there, they stayed there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Where my people, we were poor, moved up until I'm living in beautiful Manhattan. Right. New York City, 212. You know? <laughs> that's, that's the thing. If you look at Little Italy... Those people moved on. Everybody acts like, oh, it's so sad. The Italians aren't in now Little the Italy. Are there. Yeah, because the, the Italians moved to New Jersey suburbs or Long Island suburbs. That's the, the Sopranos. Yeah. I... So, you know, people get nostalgic about that. But I think, uh, but do you think black people aren't being arrested? No, I know that being arrested, that was a, f- a hysterical co- line because it yeah. was so true. It's like, you ever seen prisons? <laughs> A lot of full of black people. Right. And any white person that goes in there, they actually say, we better keep an eye on this white guy that just got right, pulled into right. prison. I, I, I get it. I yeah. just, dude. Oh, my God. <sighs> Fucking exhausted. Why, man? Ready? Because that was just craziness. Because I have, like, I, I, and I knew. First of all, whoever booked Ronnie and Colin, on the same show, I'm going to fucking kill you. Because <laughs> I never would have done that. Don't make yeah. cry. I never would have done that. Oh, was it Allie? What was she thinking? Oh, I don't know. It... I had no problem being in here with No, Colin. I know, but I did. I don't want to fucking have... You, but you're I, saying Ronnie. that you want to do this show. No, Ronnie. You just want guys that agree with you and everyone gets... No, 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 no. There's a lot of people, you know, Eastside Dave... Yeah. He's nervous about a lot of topics on your show. Oh, I know. He doesn't come around until, you know, when, when you have those guests. But those are all people that love you and think you're funny, too. But I can disagree with people. But I, I uh, You know? But I have a lot of... The, the bulk of my guests are comics. Right. They're comedians. I mean, aside from Colin, I don't just have people come on from alt-right or... or any political view. I've known him over the course of the years. He's been booked. Uh, like I said, I never would have booked him today with you on here. As as a 
not as a favor to you, but as a, a respect for you. It isn't, I don't need that you kind of respect. Done that. No, you, you, you do. No, you know, yeah. it was uh, he, Colin was booked for a while. He was booked for a long time. And when we did get Ron to sit in this week, uh, you know, I guess it was more of an oversight than anything that maybe that wasn't the best Look, best mesh. I do shows all the, but but you you don't want your shows just to be people who agree no, with no, each but other. I, it wasn't agree or disagree. I the first fucking half hour of this show, play it back. It's Great. fucking fun. It's funny. Me and you having fun. That's what I want to do when Ronnie's on the show. I don't want to get into like if we get into a serious discussion, I want it to be about music or some or girls or life in general, things like that. Not this political discussion. I don't want, I don't want to uh, have you in that it, w on this show. I'd rather us have fun. That's what I like doing with Ronnie, having fun. And knowing that he was going to be here today, I was, uh, I've been rattled since the show started. Trying to, if you watch me spinning fucking plates, trying to turn the conversation, I'm fucking juggling spinning plates here, trying to get... Let's go to the well, fucking look. kid. Let's go to the fucking. Who were who you embarrassed about, me or Colin? Who were you embarrassed? Who were you humiliated about? It's not a embarrassed. I'm, I'm fucking kidding. Humiliated. I'm oh kidding. my god. None of this it's, matters to me. It's no, but it's not. It's a. It's two. Two guests that just, I cannot, uh, uh, do a show with two guests like that. I. I. I You've just... never been in a fucking three way before. Yeah. Somebody's always feeling a little left Someone's out. Someone's left out. Yeah. There's there's fucking from yeah. from here to eternity right. taking place and right. and then you reach over and give a little diddle. Yeah, yeah, right. You're just oh, like, yeah. isn't this all fun? It's like the three yeah. of us having a great time. Yeah. I don't know. That was just so fucking uncomfortable. You know the uh difference too is a three way whether it's two chicks or two guys and a chick? If you're with two chicks, right? At no time. Do they high five? But every time it's two dudes, there is a high a five. It's time where they're like, "Well, let's high five this." I uh, I've never had the uh, t two dudes, one chick, three way. It's just a little too um, gay. Oh, I see. <laughs> no, I just I. Why would you? What about a train? Oh no, never. And somebody's in the other room. Oh no, never. That's disgusting. I've heard about them, and they never sound like something you want to be part of. I think me, you, and Colin should pull a fucking train tonight. <laughs> oh God, oof! That was uh, the 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 uh, altercation there. That you get nervous scary. around that shit, huh? For a guy who's got guns all the time, you don't like it when two fucking guys chest up. Neither me or him was thrown. You saw that, right? Oh, <laughs> me. And this would be us at a fucking Wawa today. <laughs> Neither one of us thought we were going to punch each other. I, I, I didn't think it was going to come to fisticuffs. Right. <laughs> but it was, there was a great general uh, aggression going on there. Right. That, uh, you know. He felt like he was being mocked and I felt like he told me to shut up. But that's not a big deal. But but I, I think he did tell you to shut up. Yeah, he did. Yeah. But that's what I'm... I'm but I, and I, can't, I don't think it was. I can't have that. It's not that big a deal. It's, it's a big deal because it's my, my show. It's supposed to be. But your show seems to be, uh, I, if I'm going to see right, it's everyone has to agree. No. Yeah. No, you could. Yeah, I've had many lively debates on the show, right. but nothing where it's like, hey, fuck you. And and this, I mean, you know, it's uncomfortable. It's Why can't uncomfortable. you be uncomfortable? I hate uncomfortable. Is this the same reason for the last five years you didn't go see your mom? Probably. It would have been very uncomfortable. Although she wouldn't have known who I was. So but you fuck? would have known. I would have known what? Look at a woman that has no idea. It's just an empty shell. Why do I want to see that? I remember I have a fond memory of like the last few times I saw her. And it was great. Why do I want to then, all right, let me insert uh, this memory of, you know, why do I want that? Mm. That doesn't make sense to so you. If I, I walked out of here and got hit by a car, you're done with me? <laughs> Are you dead or just fucking <laughs> vegetable? <laughs> I, I broke an ankle. <laughs> you can't fucking stop if by. If you break an ankle, tell me when. I can't see you with your ankle like this. Tell me There's when it's healed. 
Uh, maybe if you're on uh, the point where you're on one crutch or a cane, you got a hurry cane. You know what would have been funny is because I know you always have guns on you. Yeah. If you would have just shot both me and Colin. Oh, that so would have like been. I don't know what to do. Talk about. I don't know what to do. I need them quiet. Talk about the subs. Yeah. Oh, that would have been uh, great. Oh, my God. Keith, you had to have known. Like something wasn't going to go right with this show. Keith set me up a little bit. That's his thing. No, he always no. likes to do a little, a little funny. Preamble. It's, it's. I don't. You're not old enough to remember a show called Punked, but back when I was a kid, <laughs> we would have a show called Punked, right? Uh, and we would try to make things uncomfortable. Right. I. I you know, look. It, it was definitely brought up last night. Ali did approach me with it about it, and I said, you know, let's see how it goes. You know, we'll talk with Colin beforehand, and. Yeah. and you know, she did speak with Ronnie downstairs beforehand, and, you know... Uh, no, she told me it was going to be great. I would love it. Uh, yeah, and then we came in, we spoke with Ant, and then when I was sitting on the couch with, with Colin, there, you know, we had a little bit of a conversation while the show was already going on that I thought maybe, I, maybe this wasn't the best, you know, uh, match. But, you know, we, was, we were already here. He was booked before we did ask Ron, and, you know, I said, all right, well, we're gonna, we'll go with it, and... We'll see how it goes. Because, the old Geraldo show. Because with, uh, I, I truly I think you went as bad as you guys Ku Klux Klan. Well, well, that's the thing is that I have that same respect for Ronnie that of you course. do. And it, Ron, in any situation with any guest, he can handle it. And that was yeah. basically what it came down to. Now, I understand he, he has a different view. And that was the one thing I thought is, all right, well, it's an opposing yeah, view. And wait, I'd like to hear. First of all, why does everyone think I'm opposed view to criminals should go? <laughs> Are you saying... Because I don't see myself as a racist that I disagree with you? No, no, not at all. He's no, just, no. He's what is on the opposing a, he's on view a... from you that I have, though? Oh, from me? No, yeah. no. I think you and I probably match up a hell of a lot better. But him, he is a little more far on the right. He will, uh, he's be... like everyone I grew up with. This is not <laughs> fucking strange to me. Right. right. The only thing is... I felt like I was making a joke about it. Right. He was like, and you were. Yeah. I, 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 I like that. That was the only yeah. thing that went wrong. I am not unused to hearing that point of view. I don't tell you. the kind it. of fucking part of the country I'm it, from. It, was, it had nothing to do with that. I know you can uh, uh, handle yourself in a debate. Uh, it, 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 that, that wasn't the issue. I just felt there was a bit of disrespect going on there with the shut up thing and stuff. And I can't just sit here and have that... Uh, have that happen. Can I tell you something? You panic, and what an unwoke person would say was a girlish thing. You got nervous like a girl would get. But not a modern lady, a years ago girl. Like an old, like, oh. Yes, there was a little Did bit. I go, oh. I wasn't thrown by it at all, and I don't think he was. No, no, you weren't. But th then again, this is my show. Right. And, and you're a dear friend. And I, I don't well, First want, of all, that's the first time you've ever said that. That's very nice. I, I don't want to put you not in an uncomfortable position. Like I said, I know you can handle yourself and, and, and whatnot. I just didn't want to put you in a position where it looked like I was disrespecting you or setting something up it's okay. to make it like. That I, would be okay. You're just doing. No, I, I, you know, that's not me. I was going to say radio, but I guess this is TV. It's something like radio yeah. TV. But I don't do that. Like, I'm not that guy. I, I, I've had other situations in here that have gotten a little uncomfortable, and I do the same Name thing. Name one. Oh. Name one. Oh. Nick, Nick DiPaolo and Bill Nye. Nick DiPaolo and Nick, uh, yeah, Nick Bill DiPaolo Nye, and Bill Nye, the guy. science guy. Now, again, I don't think they're going to punch each other. Uh, you never know. Nick might fucking. No, I don't think so. Nick is. Off half cocked. Uh, Nick is a very respectful guy. Nick did not uh, buy into his uh, global warming bullshit. He did call him an asshole. Called him an asshole. <laughs> Can I tell you something? I know I do Nick's show all the time. We don't agree on a lot of stuff, of but I love that guy. Nick's great. Yeah. You have a good time with Nick. But uh, I don't know. That just seemed a little over the top. And, and, and by the way, I know where it was going. That wasn't where it was ending. It was Yeah, going... but that we'll never know. Now will we never know. I know in my head. And seriously, I am very proud of that double A R P boxing fucking thing. I was because I think it would be the... fucking really funny <laughs> to see me and him going at it. Just going at it. Yeah, it fucking... was like that fucking. Um, I think didn't Rocky fight uh, uh, 
Robert De Niro a couple of years ago or something. Long past when everybody went to see that. Yeah, right, right. I just couldn't. Be, like, like there would have been a scuff, a lot of loud, ooh, uh, uh, and then you both would get up, well, like, disheveled. I am telling you. you can't have that. The first time I ever Man. saw a ride in my life was in Wilmington, Delaware, and we were driving. That was Wilmington was these days. Is it nice? It's never been nice. <laughs> and by the way, neither is Baltimore. Yeah. Everyone acts like, Do you, isn't it a shame what happened to Baltimore? My entire fucking life, Baltimore has been fucking scary. Yeah. Now, Philly used to be scary, and New York was scary, and somehow they fucking had a comeback. Figured it out. Yeah. Well... They blew up a few buildings. Yeah, that's, that's what the, they did. The, 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 the mayor dropped a couple of uh, oh, cyclone Philly? bombs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That was just, uh, that was weird. Oh, you're still on that? You're still nervous I'm about still, it? I'm still, I'm not nervous about it. It's just fucking, like, like I said, it, it's just been a fucking mentally exhausting week. And, and I just... Uh, I, I, Nobody would have faulted you for taking some time off. Yeah, I know, but it was right after we already took a week. <laughs> we already took a week for Christmas. Your mom passed away. No, I mean you had to hear about it from a telegram, but your mom passed away. <laughs> it is a little odd. Maybe yeah. I, you know, should have taken a day. Most or people two. do. Uh, what do they call that? Time off. Bereavement or something. Yeah. What happened? It's okay. The main machine got down, but I got you on the backup so everyone can hear and see you. And the oh, okay. new one will be up in a second. You just won't see your screens for about a minute or two. What? All right. All right. Now everything's broken. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I figured I'd champion on, you know? I I just... I'd champion. I think it'll be funny when I walk out to get a cab and fucking Colin is standing there. Go, what up, man? You ready? You want to do Say this? some shit in there. You ready to throw down? Come on, I'll bitch. Like he wants to meet me at 3.30 next to the bike rack. <laughs> Why should I have a walk out there? He's next to the bike rack. <laughs> oh. And I think you, if I'm going to be totally honest, I think you overreacted a little. You think I did? Yeah, I think it was, uh, I think it was interesting. Overreacted? Yeah. Do you think I overreacted, Keith? Well, Keith didn't react at all. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, but... I mean, look, I came in here in case, you know, the well, geriatrics were going to go at it. I was right here. I was going to hold Colin for uh, Ronnie to hit him. I don't, I don't think, I, I think that was going to happen. I don't think I overreacted. I, I, I think I needed to do something. I think I needed to, to separate uh, you two because it just would have continued. It would have gotten worse. That was I swear. Because, because like you say, here, here's, here's what your, your point yeah. is. Sure. Criminals should go to prison because when you commit a crime, that's it. And then at some point, Colin would have gone to, well, it's uh, genetic that they uh, commit crimes. And then how are we going to, how, how then are we going to. Well, what would you would have said if I wasn't here and somebody would have said it's just genetic that people cr commit crimes? I probably would have gone to uh, another story yeah. about um, the nuclear button on, on the desk or something. Yeah. Fun stories. Right. I'm all about fun, Ronnie. So Allie's the one taking the full... Allie, this. Allie is uh, now going to have to throw herself on a sword like a samurai. Uh, I, won't, I won't let that happen. Because, like I said, she did come to me last night it's very night emotional. It. Is she crying? She's, a, she's upset. Oh, my God. Allie, come no. in. Allie's crying. Come in. No, I'm fine here, but here's the thing. Like, just so we're clear, Colin was on the schedule before we added this. And that's the truth. Look at her. I'm no, I'm, I know it's the truth, but you're crying. No. There's no crying in this show. I don't know if you know this, but I'm a woman. What? I know it's... Well, apparently so I'm... is Anthony. No. <laughs> <laughs> Allie, what would you have had me done when he said shut up? Or was I, was I rude when I was joking? Oh, you I don't know. It was awkward. I don't know. I'm over it. So, been fun. Look, I got to tell you. Everyone loves it. I yeah, don't doubt it. Show. People love a little uh, yeah, bit. Yeah, you know uh, what? That happens. And I've done like a million fucking interviews, and they only like the uncomfortable ones. They only like the ones that to somehow go a little, uh, make a left turn somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I get that. I, I, I totally get that. But uh, I don't know, Ronnie. I, I just, I really was at a loss as uh, what to, to do How to long handle have it like you been a professional. Doing this? Uh, 20 uh, some odd years at this point, but, but 
then what do you do? You, you, yeah. You're like, all right, guys, no. Like, I don't know. I don't want to. I, I, it's my show. I, I have a couple of guests. I don't want to make either one uncomfortable. Why wouldn't you have found a place that we could both agree? Oh, boy. Yeah. That'd be uh, like a uh, fucking uh, not, Nazi and a rabbi sitting there. Who am I? Sooner or later, Jimmy, people have to agree. Like my Jimmy Carter. I know that, that you know, I'm, that's why I'm sa- I was saying to you guys yesterday when you were so mad. I go, what does it take for you to be happy? You got the president, you got the Congress, yeah. the Senate. But you're still as angry as if none of that were true. I think people in this country aren't going to be happy until the other side is dead. Yes, I think you're right. Is that what you're after? No, but but here's here's another thing, Ronnie. Yeah. Do you really think I'm this mad at everything? In the I don't world? know. Do you I don't know do anymore. You really? Yeah. I mean, you used to come in and do stuff at NEW all the time, and we would just fucking have a ball. You were never a- angry about anything. Yeah, I, I went through a little angry phase. I'm not angry. What, what am I? What do I got to be angry about? I honestly, I'm not. I'm I'm not. Like I, I, I get uh, I, I get concerned at certain things, you know, you watch the news and see things, but I know the news is all bullshit too. And half of what we're disseminating and coming up with our opinions is, is bullshit. So I'm not basing it on that. If you, you know, look at my Twitter feed, it's gone down to barely anything. I don't, I just don't care. What do you mean by that? Cause I don't really follow Twitter. What do you mean? I well, I I was. You don't tweet constantly. Just fucking. Yeah. Bah, bah, bah. I don't even give a fuck. I just don't give a fuck. Maybe I'm just beaten. Maybe I've just been beaten down. I don't know. I really just don't care about uh, what what is going on on fucking Fox News or CNN or any other one. You know what? It's not even in my on my TV when I like I used to just leave it on and stuff. Yeah. I'd rather watch Hogan's Heroes at this point. Well, you know, yeah. it's anti-Semitic, but maybe what you really need yeah. is Opie and Jimmy back. Maybe that's where you're at. You're happy. I think Opie and Jimmy. Yeah. Would uh, not not either. Just one of them, both. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> now, I uh, I love Jimmy. I would do a show with Jimmy in a second. Mm. Uh, Opie, not so much. Hope he brought me a lot of aggravation. Well, you're not going to do a show with Jimmy because he's got Sam. You know well, what I mean? He's got Sam. People uh, have accidents. Yeah. Oh, okay. People, uh, you know, fall off a bike. Things like that. Mm. People uh, walk around um, uh, to bad neighborhoods. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. No. I uh, the the Opie factor in that whole thing, that initially was like, I was getting very angry. I was an angry guy at that point. I was very resentful of my on-air partner for um, many years. But you never said anything. Why would I? Why would I? The checks were rolling in, Ronnie. I know, but here's the thing: you you do hold a lot inside that we're finding out this week, and it makes you know, like you didn't. I mean, whatever's happening, you know. Your feelings about your mom, you're not sure about what that is? I'm pretty sure about what that is. What's... She's been gone for five years, and now she's uh, dead. And what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? You go through the motions. You, you feel bad. You have the funeral. And then that's it. What do you want from me? Maybe a little grieving. Maybe if you would have gotten the time off that you need it. You know, a little time. It wouldn't let me take uh, any time. <laughs> no. I figured, you know what? It was, we, we came off a week of vacation. Yeah. And like I said, it's been, it's been five years. She's been gone for five years. It's rough. It's sort of, uh, you know. Yeah, it is rough. Yeah. It's, a, it's a shitty thing. But, you know, Keith's dad passed away recently, and that was a shitty thing, too. It's just what happens. Well, Allie and I are going out to a um, KKK meeting tonight. She's taking me to. Oh, are you meeting up? Uh, hopefully. Uh, yeah, I hope just meet some of the folks, get a chance to press some flesh. And she knows a lot of it. I think she's working as a secretary there. <laughs> if you. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I have Germans in my family. I'm totally cool with it, Allie. 
Hallie's just in the fishbowl yeah. weeping. <laughs> Why? She feels bad. Allie's very emotional. Look at Keith. He's following along. What do you what did what are you base saying that was a good show on Twitter, Keith? The people on Twitter yeah. are saying nothing but great things. That's what they would like. They, That's what they would like every they would day. Like. They would like that we just start pissing on each other. Just shit and yeah, shitting, a lot of fuck shit. yous. Yeah, throw it shitting in our hands. <laughs> back and forth. I don't know. Allie uh, could come in here with her white Bible, just screaming, <laughs> the white man is coming back. The white man is the only one who went to the moon. There were no blacks on the moon. <laughs> I did see people yeah. that were mad that they made that movie about the black lady mathematicians. Uh, hidden figures. Yeah. Right. So glad you said figures. Well, of course. You said something else earlier. And then... no, no, I've heard that used, <laughs> yeah. uh, by the way, in yeah. uh, some crass attempt at humor, uh, Ronnie. Uh, but yes, there were three uh, black women who yeah. apparently, uh, well, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin still just would have been twirling around the moon yeah. as we speak if it wasn't for them. I, uh, yeah. I don't, Ali, a lot of people are calling me a race traitor on here. Oh. Uh, and they also said, who does Keith have you booked with tomorrow? Hitler? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, these are very effeminate readers. They, they are. Yeah, they're Perhaps very I should be wearing them. I, um, it's, no. <laughs> it started with my, me as a child wearing a dress. And then I, I, I grabbed my pearls and gasped at the <laughs> mere sight of two men working out an issue. When you actually said, I am going to separate you two, I, I felt to... like, what a social failure we had. This was the opportunity. I can't. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I'll tell you whose fault it is. Yeah. This guy right down here. <laughs> Artie, Artie Lang. <laughs> it's Artie Lang. There he is. That's the guy. Oh, right now he's probably, uh, well, I think... Uh, where, where's it? Where's his? Uh, I don't know if we're disclosing. We're not going to disclose it, it, but is it in the? War. It's not warm. Is it in? Oh, it's not warm. No. It's in the ring of the uh, bomb uh, cyclone. Yes. yes, it is in the bomb cyclone. That's good. Hey, uh, That's great. He's going to go out and try to uh, snort the entire sidewalks. They are trying to. They've got him on a barge. I don't know how this is working <laughs> out, but there's no rehab in the United States <laughs> that will take Artie anymore. It's like a signed risk with insurance. Yeah. They just won't take him anywhere. He's too much of a risk. He's on a barge, much like how they transported King Kong over. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, poor Art. Yeah, it was, uh, you know. All right, someone just texted me. I just tuned in. Why don't you guys start fighting again? <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you know what it is? After so many years of knowing you and respecting your work, Ronnie, I could not have a guest, no matter who they are, uh, Come on here and 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 say and tell you that you should you know shut up. I don't care who it would be. It could be could have been anybody. So you're saying you're him. not going to have Colin back in? Could have been. Uh, in, as, in as a respect to me. In the future, with a, a different <laughs> guest that might work better with him. Yeah. You know, I, I, he uh, there there yeah. are are people that. Um, I have no problem with Colin. I'd have him on my show. No, I just thought it was, it was disrespectful the way he told you. Uh, you know, you're doing what Ron Bennington does on, on radio and have done your entire career. You're funny guy, insightful. Funny how? Witty. Well, how the fuck am I funny? All, all those fucking black jokes you were telling in there were <laughs> hilarious. No, and, and I can't have, you know, any guest saying shit like that. So it got uncomfortable. I, I knew he had to go. But, yeah, I disagree. He was booked, and now, no. people are saying this was down to the like the McGregor fight, right down to the the because I guess we've had some technical problems. We've been in and out. Oh, in and out. Has, yeah. has, has it has it cut out or anything? They, oh boy, the rumors are going to swirl that we've cut parts out of the show. And oh yeah, we're back. We've been back for a while, and uh, right. the recording will be perfect. And the afterwards. recording will show everything. Absolutely, yeah. Nothing's been cut so out. It'll show, and Ronnie fucking hauled off. Yeah, yes, a right hook. Holy shit! That yeah. never was going to happen, Amp, by either one of us. I know. I honestly know it wasn't going uh, right. to resort to to fighting, but like I said, I can't have anybody coming in here and and telling you 
to shut up. It doesn't work. Maybe I needed to shut up a little bit. I Maybe I need to, to shut, shut up and listen about fucking. <laughs> I never know how bad black people were. Now I know. <laughs> now I got a fucking thing. Uh, shit. See, I learned a little something. That's what the Here's, show is all about. I don't. I lived in a neighborhood yeah. that was separated by train tracks. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing that you guys are gonna tell me that you know. No. But I'm an adult now. That's but the it difference. Wasn't that. It was the 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 shut up and they. You know what? Maybe you want me to this, shut up. It was I should this, shut up like, a little right bit. from the start. It's like or sitting next to you. It was like right off the bat. I was like, uh oh, something. This isn't good. I didn't feel that at all. I thought we were all having fucking fun. I'm an empath. I mm. I, I sense these things. Okay. I sense these things. Holy mackerel! I might have to join Billy across the street. Mm. I'm sure he's still there. Him and fucking, who, who's over there drinking with him? Is the bar open? Probably Gino. Yeah. Gino. He's yeah. still there. And, and Billy are over there having, having some drink. No, no. Alcohol can't solve this problem, Ronnie. I need to hit the harder drugs. <laughs> sure. You're preaching to the choir, my friend. Oh, my God. When was the last time something like that where you would have thrown down? How old? Uh, it was two nights ago at the fucking <laughs> stand when some kid said, uh, uh, as he was taking forever and I was busting his balls, and he said, I'll break your arm. And then I fucking said, what? And then, but Big J had the same feeling. I was bringing Big J up after. Yeah. And he acted just like you. But people really? say shit to each other. You're saying stuff. You take his, it's his like curb. Fearless gloves and go, whoa. <laughs> people say shit to you. Yeah. People say shit, and you say shit back. Yeah, but but like what the uh, the thirty thirty year old Ron Bennington? Would you have fucking maybe I, haul off? This wasn't a, a place even for that. It was two fucking guys that disagreed. This could happen today at fucking Wawa. <laughs> Sometimes people want to butt. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. What are the odds that it happened? I don't know. But if uh, you want the odds on uh, football, <laughs> I would definitely use BetDSI. Uh, NFL Wild Card Weekend is here. Boy, is it as wild as this show? Uh, the college football championship is set. College basketball underway, the NHL, NBA. Every night there's a game on. BetDSI is here to help you win big in this year, the new year, 2018. Whether you're going to the game, headed out, uh, head, uh, hanging out at home, or headed out somewhere to watch the game, be sure you check out BetDSI before you go. Get the most up-to-date info available to start your year off right. BetDSI.com. Been around since 1998. Mm. That, in that year, he'd have been on the floor. Ronnie Bennington. In 1998? 1998, Ronnie B. Can I say this? I was on the floor. 1798, and he would have been president. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was going to fight each other today. Oh, it was right. two fucking nice people right. having we a need, disagreement. We need pistols for a duel. We could have oldie time pistols. Mm. Um, yeah, an A-plus rated sports book offering the odds on all the major sports with focus on the NFL, but also everything happening uh, in the world. Reality TV, award shows, celebrity happenings, the Artie and Anthony show. Golden Globes this Sunday night. <laughs> Golden Globes. How about that? You hmm. think that's just going to be a, um, a, a, a political correct fest of women well, empowerment? And yeah, they're, they want to wear black dresses as a way of saying... Is that Fuck it? Fuck you guys. Fuck the guys? Yeah. They look hot in black, though. The, they do look nice in black. Uh, it's sexy. thinning. Sexy. It's thinning. Yeah. Aren't there those... no male presenters? This year, well, I thought that's what they were doing. Seth Meyers is hosting, so, so far, no. <laughs> <laughs> See what <laughs> I did there? <laughs> and that means I can present. Yeah. Stop it, Anthony. You're all men. Uh, did you pull your gun out? Just cock it no, under the... No, no, no. I, I, I didn't think... Uh, when Keith came in, I knew if uh, some lead had to be flung, he could be the guy that does it. Keith, you're holding right now? Not right now. It's in my bag. Yeah, that's safe. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, right oh, by, it's right by Ali. <laughs> he's, uh, he's heading uptown. <laughs> Uh, if there's something happening in this world of ours, BetDSI.com has the experts building those odds. And it's a great way to take advantage of their expertise. So check it out yourself, BetDSI.com. Use the promo code Kumia25 and get yourself some free credits.
Try it. It's free. Bet DSI, B-E-T-D-S-I.com. Available on all of your desktop and mobile platforms. Easy to use, fun to play, or just explore. And if you want to try it out, enter that promo code Kumia25. You get free credits just for registering. That's BetDSI.com, promo code Kumia25. Thank you, BetDSI. Whew. Yeah, that's, uh, that's something. I'm going to be playing that over in my head a few times. Huh. Well, how I, you know, if it happens again, it's a learning experience. Uh, you, you're never too old or I've been doing something too long where you can't learn something new, Ronnie, about this wacky business. Well, to me, you got to ride the wave, brother. When the wave, when the wave starts to break, you ride it. I got to ride it? Yeah. Like point break? In this case, you were like, you're point break. You're like, come on, guys. Let's get out of the water. Let's paddle out. Yeah, we don't want to be. <laughs> we don't want to be in the water. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. That's, just, that's me. I think if you've watched or listened to the ONA show or anything, I'm always that guy. Mm -hmm. Like, like that, that is, you know, for the, the abuse Opie takes, that is something he did. He was the guy that could sit there in an uncomfortable situation and just keep it going and play it out. And I'd be there like, oh, my fucking God, I can't sit here. I'm, I'm ready to run out the, the door. Um, you've also been able to do things like yeah. that. There have been horrid situations playing out on uh, the Ron and Fez show. And you, you're like, what's, what, what's, how you doing, buddy? Yeah. You doing, remember when Ronnie, yeah. uh, when Fezzy used to break yeah. down? I don't know how you did that. The Fez and the intern, when Fez was drunk, oh. was one of the best. And are you kidding? Give me any slack? And it was like, oh my god, I was, I was dying just listening to. When him. Fez drank, you always knew how much anger he actually had. That it wasn't just the the anger and fear were close. You know <laughs> yes. What I mean? like, a lot of times he would just show fear, but he was really angry. But you know. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder how he's doing in the cold weather. Oh, he's doing okay for himself. Remind him of something. He he still gets in touch with you and stuff. Every day we talk. We we. Uh, I know a lot of the people would like to know if he's doing well because yeah. he's a good guy. Yeah. I, um, where is he? Pinellas? Uh, whatever was that pl place called? Yeah, it's called Pinellas. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you know uh, you know because of some of the sodomite stuff yesterday. Oh, and, you know that kind of stuff. Right. He doesn't like to think that you're going anti-gay. I would never go anti. gay I love the gays. Love the gay. Yeah. Well, we're just not talking about <laughs> transgender people. We're talking about people who dress like males. Uh, right, like, like gay guys that just dress like, uh, guys. Yeah. I know them. Mm. Me, me and Keith, we went out to, uh, fucking Fire Island. Is that right? To gay Beach. Fire Island. Hung out with gay people the whole weekend. It was fantastic. You guys gave it a try? <laughs> Lots of swinging cock out there, Ronnie. Oh, Jesus. They just have the most fun out of everybody. Clubs are just slamming. They're fucking kissing everybody. It doesn't right. matter. It's a great lifestyle, you know, if you could, could do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you got to be able to handle a few things that, uh, you know. Well, it seems like you'll at least be okay with being a top. Nah, I don't the know. The bottom would take some real adjustment. But I think being a bottom, that's where you're really making that commitment. Yeah. That's when that cowboy suit doesn't come sure off. Oh, no. That's a permanent. You're just wearing the chaps. That's in the closet. <laughs> you dress like David Lee Roth when you leave the house. The Remember when David Lee Roth had just the ass hanging out? He just, he'd be in front of a stadium of yeah. people with his ass hanging out of chaps. Yeah. And, and no guy, and the guys loved it. By the way, I saw that you guys had a Van Halen book sitting out there that I hadn't seen before. Is this something new that came out? You having the author on? Uh, no, no, he's uh, a little bit of a racist. Thing. Oh, no. He's a racist? We, we had him booked tomorrow, and we've already uh, <laughs> can that. I've already been pulled from the show, so you don't have to worry about me. <laughs> oh, no. My people uh, want me off the show. They've already pulled There's the ass chaps that you love so much. That uh, Guys are cheering that man's ass. Bozy, bozy, bop. Diddy, bop. <laughs> But uh, it was a different time. I think yeah. if uh, anybody got out on stage like that now, you'd be like, what the fuck is... Yeah. What is I'd like to see him get out on stage like that now. Well, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, that was when uh, rock and roll was king. It was king then. Yeah. Not anymore. 80s, um, 
Early now look 80s. at even we were talking about this today on the show. Coachella is like Eminem and is Beyonce. It? Yeah, there's Beyonce. no there's no rock bands left. They're there's gone. Nothing left. Every rock band is as old as me and you. It's just yeah. There's no new rock band out there. Yeah. Really don't. What happened? Yeah, I remember listening to Van Halen with the big, the big headphones. Right. Plugged in with the quarter inch jack into the turntable. Yeah. And just mother would be screaming for you. Oh, yeah. mom. Sorry. Yeah. I just had a nice memory. Sorry, mom. Jamie's crying. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa. My God. Well, uh, Ron Bennington. Uh, he could be heard on noon to three weekdays on Sirius XM 99. I would like to uh, do that show. You're more than welcome. Well, what is uh, the point? I'll bring a friend. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll have you on with a feminist. Yes, I would love that. Yeah, I would love that. And I'll plug the thing I'm doing with uh, our good friend Rich Voss. Rich Voss, yes, a night of headliners. That's February 9th at 8 p.m. at uh, Ridgefield Playhouse in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Mm, Going to be fun. If the place is still there after the. The cyclone bomb. It's uh, me, Voss, and Jim Florentine. The very, very funny Ooh, Jim Florentine. Florentine. Yeah. He's a guy that uh, knows his uh, rock music. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Uh, he, he's disgusted by the uh, music scene. Yes. For the last probably 20 years. Yeah, he's been let down. Although he told me he's not a Kiss fan. I was very surprised. Well, Jimmy. Jimmy is the Kiss guy. He's a big Kiss fan. Yeah. Kiss is like, I could hear Florentine, like, what, what makeup? Yeah. What, 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 what am I, five? I need my rock stars to dress up and put makeup on. So funny. Yeah, he uh, he's not into those things no. like that. Even ketchup, I think. I never thought Kiss. Like ketchup on a hamburger. What am I, what am I a kid? What am I, 10? That's pretty good. It's ketchup on a fucking. I agree with him, though, on both counts. On both counts. On both counts, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, boy, a couple of uh, things to, to close the program. Five at now. five? Do we have our five at <laughs> five to six? That's uh, that's what it is. We probably don't even have time for the intro. Um, my God, man. Oof. I am going to go home and fall into a bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> ah, yes, this is a great story. You tough guy. Paul Servino uh, is threatening Harvey Weinstein. Uh, after he found out about... Uh, oh, my God, and you had them both booked on the show today. They were Harvey Weinstein and Paul Zavino on the show. Uh, that would be good. Uh, do we have the video of what Paul Zavino? What was your Zavino? thoughts Tough when guy. you heard about Harvey Weinstein derailing your daughter's career by actively trying to blacklist her from Hollywood? If I would answer you... I might put everybody in jeopardy, <laughs> but if he if I meet him on the street, he will, he ought to hope that he goes to jail, because if he comes if we come across, I think he'll be lying on the floor Fun, somehow, funny, magically. Funny you should say that. So today, that help here. me there. Today we actually reported that the DA is making strides in their case, trying to bring criminal charges to He's going to go to jail. Yeah. Oh yeah. That son of a bitch. Good, he, good for him if he goes, because if not, he has to meet me, and I will kill the motherfucker. <laughs> Whoa! Have a good one. All right, thanks. Oh, Holy. Take it easy. Oh. Sir, sir, did hey, you Paulie. know about oh, any no. of these accusations oh, no, before? Did, did you learn about this like no, the rest of us did? Why would you try to keep it going? You just I'm got sure the did. great offline. Well, well, yeah, what, that's what the that You can't beat that line. Now you got him fucking that? waddling back to yeah. his car. Could you give me something from Goodfellas? Wheelchair. Right. What was, you what go was back. your initial reaction you go. when you had heard Me and these Sonny. allegations that were made? You gotta, you gotta go. Right? Absolutely well, after all, we are not on him off. You, you proud of your daughter? My daughter's oh my a wonderful God. person, courageous Leave and a wonderful woman being. You got the great quotes. So you'll never do better. Kill the motherfucker. What so. do you need? Isn't it this great that he still has purple up. hair after all these oh, years? Him, Never go went gray. Stayed purple. Purple hair. It's for a new role. The, wow, he. Uh, what do I know about the motherfucker? What, what do you want me to do? What do I know about running a restaurant? I don't know anything. Uh, you you see, know? Hey, Weinstein, he's treating me like half a fag over here. What do you think we could get the Bennington Flaherty fight on the undercard? Oh. This is oh. all fun for you, isn't it, Keith? Oh. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> all fucking fun for you. I, uh, you know, uh, the whole I'm in a delicate emotional state. That's yeah, I know you is. are. I know so, you are. You know, 
I, uh, you know. What if I take you out for a new dress? Does that make you feel better? <laughs> <laughs> we are in the garment district. Yes. There's yeah. plenty of uh, this is the places la- to put. This fucking block is the last New York that I remember. It really is. It's the last block that feels like New York. Yeah, Quint, uh, Colin Quinn was saying the same thing. Is that right? Yeah, he was saying you walk down here and you feel like, you know, you've been thrown... 40 50 years ago it's uh yeah yeah it's old new york there should be an old woman hanging out the window talking did, to people on the street did you see that special that he did about old new york and everything oh, yeah. colin and he said that black girls would have three different kinds of candy going and that fucking i'm like who remember <laughs> even <laughs> how did anybody remember that you thought that that was like unique to some girl that right. you know but she had three different kinds of candy going. He fucking nailed Unbelievable. It. Yeah. I saw him. Uh, the last time I saw him was at Governor's. Uh, yeah. Working out brand new stuff. And it's just everything. Just it's so unbelievable. fucking funny. He's a smart guy. Also on that special, he was talking about Italian guys. That they'll fight. They'll fight with bats. But then if there's something they don't know, like a froyo, they're like, yo. <laughs> move away from it. Like, what is that? What don't the fuck that is that? <laughs> And the way he was walking was very specific to a time and place. Yeah, the yeah. Italian guys, that weird kind of athletic walk. It's He gets every subtlety. Nuance. You could stand up there and just recite it, and it's not going to be as good as he I know. tells a story. Because, yeah, he's got everything down. Fucking guy. He's brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, and then, uh, I guess, yeah, put, let's put our little fucking our little list back up there. Yeah. Uh, oh, The View. This is good. I was just going to talk about the nuclear uh, button story, uh, Donald Trump. Um, uh, uh, apparently, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un just stated that the nuclear button is on his desk all the time. Will someone from his de- depleted and food-starved regime please inform him that I, too, have a nuclear button, but it is much bigger and a more powerful one than his, and my button works. That's what the president of the United States. Was he talking about his clit? I don't know. That wasn't even cock stuff. Button is a clit. Yeah. It's not uh, your cock. He should have said the lever. Right. Here's the thing. My missile. Even if you have a bigger missile, you don't have a bigger button. You know what I mean? Like, you're not shooting a tank with this giant fucking (laughs) button. The button could be really small and launch a giant missile. Right. The button size, did somebody tell him the button size really doesn't matter? I don't think people are proofreading his tweets. He's a madman. Yeah. He is definitely a madman. Well, come with me on the Bannon side. You want, Bannon you want 2020. Me to go Bannon? Yeah. I'm going to wait a couple of more days to see how it plays out. Uh, and now Mitt Romney is going to run yeah. in 2020 because they're going to give him that senator job. They want Mitt Romney in uh, uh, the Utah, I guess. Yeah, Utah. Uh, what's his name? Who's leaving? That old Orrin guy. Hatch. Orrin Hatch. Yeah. Orrin. He's been there for 41 years. 41 years. I read uh, that his initial run, uh, one of, a part of his platform was term limits. <laughs> Is that it was right? term limits. Yeah. And he was in there 41 fucking years. Uh, yeah, so you think they're grooming him to. No, I think run... Mitt, Mitt wants to do it on his own. He fucking hates Trump. Now, and... a challenging an incumbent president is uh, very um, bad for the party. No, it's very bad. That uh, is what happened with Ted Kennedy and Jimmy Carter last time it ever really went down like that. Mm-hmm. It had nothing to do with the dead chick in the car? No, Teddy, uh, Jimmy Carter was the president, right? and Teddy went in, and it was much like uh, what you, happened. You yeah, don't we, think Reagan was going to win anyway? Oh, no, no. R- Reagan, no one thought he was going to win the last couple. Everyone forgets, and they think that Reagan was always considered a great man, but he was like the joke who kept running he was over. The, yeah, he was like the silly guy who kept running. And then it was like people didn't even like him and then he got shot and everyone fucking everyone liked loved him. him yeah like giuliani after 911 yeah people uh, fucking 910 2001 despised him giuliani was hated yeah and uh 911 america's mayor yeah he was america's mayor Amer- they called him america's then mayor he went on to be the world's mayor after that world's mayor and now he's the mayor of pluto he was uh, yeah 
at one point he was called Churchill, Churchill in a baseball cap. And I'm like, this is going too far. We really need too to far. slow down. Yeah. <laughs> did you uh, see Dunkirk? Oh, we talked I about did yesterday. see Dunkirk. Yeah. You loved it. I, I thought I it thought, was good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think it captured the scope right. of uh, what it was because I, I remember seeing pictures of the actual Dunkirk and those beaches were packed. Yeah. It looked like uh, Fire Island on a, on a warm day. <laughs> well, you know a lot about Fire Island. I love it. All the gay people. <laughs> Gays are my friends. Gays and the Jews. I live amongst the Jews <laughs> in uh, Roslyn Heights. That's something about the alt right. Like, no matter what they say about me, yeah. they don't like that I can't jump in on that Jew thing. Well, I thought the the religious right loves Israel, right? They that's going to be the yeah, return yeah, of, of Jerusalem. You know, so yeah, we're all pro Israel, yeah. anti Palestine. But they really want me to go with the you know whole three parentheses thing, and mm -hmm. you really won't do it. Plow through, but I'm like, I love. I have Jew neighbors. Yeah. They're great. They shut up. They don't mostly don't call the cops on me. So you're pro gay. Love pro Jew, pro Jew, anti black, anti woman. Would you say um, that? No, no, what not at all. Pro black, anti -black pro -black woman. Woman. Okay, all right. Uh, but <laughs> no, even and, black and men agree with you then. I, <laughs> no, I um, I love, I I love everybody. I am uh, I know. full of love, full of love and compassion. That's me. Uh, Ronnie Bennington, thank you so much. Thank you. And, what a uh, week we let had. Let me apologize. No, not at all. Uh, I, 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 I really um, no, not, not at all. want uh, that was fine. any disrespect. Hey, I had it coming. No. You guys fucking set me up. It was great. You did not have it coming. Yeah. That's for sure. And um, what's what's going on here? That's it. That's it. We're, we're good until we'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Have a good one.